Live from John Ryan Stadium in Metairie, Crescent City Sports is proud to bring you high school baseball. Tonight, we open our spring sports coverage with a District 9-5A matchup. And a good one at that as the Jesuit Blue Jays play host to the Holy Cross Tigers. And a pleasant good evening to you, Ken Trahan, along with the hurler himself, Kenny Fursang. On a pleasant night in Metairie as the oldest rivalry in this area, one of the oldest in Louisiana, is renewed here this evening. It's Jesuit Holy Cross. Need we say anything else? Uh, we will. We have a lot to say, but uh, the rivalry speaks for itself in any sport, any time. In fact, we were here 11 years ago now to open this stadium. On opening night, we did that game live when Jesuit played none other than Holy Cross. It was a festive night, a very memorable occasion here at John Ryan Stadium. We lost John Ryan this past year, a wonderful man and friend, and miss him, but his legacy lives on. Kenny, always a pleasure to have you with us, and boy, it's always a pleasure to watch this particular rivalry, isn't it? Well, first of all, it's always great to be here with you. Um, nothing says baseball more than this rivalry here in the city with Holy Cross and, and Jesuit. It goes back a long, long time, and you know, I don't know what the what the series records are, but I gotta believe they're they're pretty even, and um, you know, just you know, the the Frank Mizorakas, the Callbackers, and Everybody that's been a part of this rivalry over the years have just become iconic. Well, I think about this, and obviously I think about Frank Mizoraka and Lou Carboni. It's kind of hard to get past that when you think about these two programs in schools. Jesuit won the first game of this two-game series in the Catholic League. They play two-game series in this league now, back-to-back. -back, and Jesuit on Tuesday won 6-2 to at Tiger Park. So the Blue Jays... Looking to sweep, Jesuit comes in 13-4 and four overall, 2-1 and one in District 9-5A under the direction of Kenny Goodlett. Kenny's done an excellent job since taking over this program from Joey Latino, who's now doing an excellent job as a coach at Brother Martin. And uh, Coach Goodlett has just done his job in, in professional, solid, consistent fashion. No question about it. I, you know, he, he comes out here very professionally, of course knows the game, and works the kids hard. You know, they, 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 they are very, very well prepared as a coach. Our job is always to try and get our kids as prepared or more prepared than anybody you're going to play. And you're not going to play Jesuit and be more prepared than they are. Jesuit, a year ago, went to the state semifinals in Division One in Hammond, lost to eventual state champion Catholic in the semifinals last year in a game we did on Radio Live. And, and this is a program that is second to none in Louisiana. Jesuit, of course, is at the top of the heap. No one has won more titles than Jesuit. 21 state championships in baseball. The closest school to them is seven behind. Blue Jays also have the most runner-ups in the history of Louisiana. Ten of those, so that's the kind of program it's been. Holy Cross, under the direction of first-year head coach Aaron Barrez, a, a Holy Cross graduate, and he's fit in very well. Let me start by saying this. Want to extend our not only best wishes, but our prayers to Aaron and his wife, who is ready to give birth. She is due to give birth, it looks like, tomorrow morning to twins. And our thoughts and prayers are with her uh, for successful experience there. And I know Aaron's attention has to be split a little bit here tonight. That's a pretty tough thing, but it speaks volumes that he's here tonight. Well, I guarantee you, you know, you, you've had kids. I've had kids when I was coaching. And, uh, you know, your, your loyalties are split. Well, obviously, it's going to be one of those nights and a situation for him where he's he's going to focus on the job, and he'll do a good job. I know he will because he's he's that kind of guy. So, really good. But Holy Cross comes in 10-8-1 overall. Now, they're just two years removed from winning the Catholic League championship. So, this is another really good baseball program with a rich history, Kenny. Again, you know, you, you got a great coach here that comes out and works the kids hard. Um, you know, he's got he's got a great program all the way down to the fifth grade program, and uh, it's really encouraging to have your own minor leagues where you can see what you got coming up. And uh, you know, they're still fairly young too. I believe. Yep. And uh, I mean, they're going to be good. Holy Cross has won two state championships. They've been state runner-ups twice. Over the years, Holy Cross will be adorned in their navy blue tops tonight with their old gold numerals, the gray pants, and their blue caps with the familiar HC on them. Jesuit will be in their, their Jesuit look. Pinstripes, the blue pinstripes, of course, the blue numbers and print. 
across the front blue caps navy not navy blue but royal blue and of course the royal blue stockings as well lights are on here at john ryan stadium and we'll have the starting lineups for you momentarily and then the first pitch coming up soon after that too as we get you set for baseball we'll tell you all about the weather here as well and right off the bat i want to say thank you to Chip Merritt and uh, Robbie Utzler for taking care of business here tonight because they do a great job for us and, and make it look good and make us look good. And we're very appreciative of their efforts as well. And Blue Jays have taken the field, so we'll have the national prayer, national anthem here, of course, to get us going here tonight, the playing of our national anthem. Glad you're with us here this evening. Ken Trahan with Kenny Frisang. Starting lineups tonight, first of all, for the Holy Cross Tigers, 10-8-1 and 2-1 and and in Catholic League play. Leading off in center field, Brody Forstall, Dom Pellegrin will be the shortstop. It's Lucas Salta Famaggio at first base with Pierce Bronnax, the catcher and cleanup hitter. Will Andre will be at third base. Ryder Blanchard is the second baseman. Blake Chauvin serves as the designated hitter. Aaron Guichard will be in left field, and Chris Serkovich plays right field for the Tigers. Top three, four stall, Pellegrin, Salter, Formaggio. Middle three, Broadnax, and Drayden Planchard. Bottom three, Chauvin, Guichard, and Serkovich on the mound for the Tigers is Cole Killian. For the Jesuit Blue Jays, 13 and 4, 2 and 1 in Catholic League play. Under the direction of Kenny Goodland, leading off at third base, Everett Denny. The catcher will be William Good. Hunter Ufnack is at first base, hitting third with Gates Barre, the cleanup hitter, the designated hitter. Alex Johnson on second base hitting fifth. It is Brent Berrigan, the left fielder, hitting sixth. Hitting seventh and right field is Michael Brothers batting eighth. That's it, Brock Patrick Berrigan in left field. Michael Brothers in right field will bat seventh. It's Jake Morisi, the shortstop, hitting eighth. And Scout Hughes is in center field batting ninth. It will be Penny, Denny, along with Good and Ufnock, Barre, Johnson, and Berrigan. Brothers, Morisi, and Hughes. And on the mound for the Blue Jays, the big left-hander, Lee Bridgewater. Bridgewater. He's big, and saw him a lot last year, and he's good. Five games pitched thus far. One and one record, 2.37 earned run average for Lee. 20 and two-thirds innings pitched. He's allowed only 12 hits overall, which is obviously impressive. Bridgewater, nine runs, seven of those earned. The walk number is 13, and the strikeout number is 23 for Lee Bridgewater, a left-hander. Big guy, good pitcher. He's going to come in uh, low to mid-80s. Of course, on the left side, to me, for high school, that's always an advantage. You don't see enough left-handers. And uh, he's going to come out and, you know, strike-walk ratio isn't great. But, uh, you know, as usual, the judges of pitchers are going to come out and throw strikes and make you put the ball in play. We are set for baseball, and leading it off for the Tigers will be an experienced player. Brody Forstall, the center fielder, he's a good one. And watch Brody play Brody last few Forstall. years, and Forstall will stand in from the left side to get this one started here this evening. <clears throat> Tell you about the weather conditions as well coming up here. Forstall in at 245 on the season. Left-handed swinger is mentioned. Ready to go. Sign given. 
First pitch of the ball game is a strike called at the knees. We're underway at 7.03. 0-1 to forestall. Shade him the hit to the opposite field a bit around the outfield, slightly on the infield. And a fastball just missing. Pretty good-looking pitch, and it's 1-1. One one. Well, the first two pitches were on the outside part of the plate, so if you got your guys playing that way, that's where you want to go with it. Lefty-lefty matchup here. Wind is a bit of a factor here this evening. More on that in a moment. A ball and a strike. Bridgewater kicks and he deals. Swing and a miss. Boy, he took something off. They had four stall out in front. It's a ball and two strikes now on Brody. That was a good breaking pitch. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, wind's blowing out the left, so it's going to favor balls hit out that way. Bridgewater the sign and the one-two pitch on the way. Breaking ball over but high. So the count is now even at two balls and two strikes on Forstall with Pellegrin and Salta from Maggio to follow. Yes, that breaking pitch stayed up, uh, unlike the first one he threw. Nod yes. And the 2-2 pitch on the way. Breaking ball, sitting pitch, same result. Up, and it's full 3-2, and two, so a good at-bat for Forstall. About to see pitch number seven. Right, he, he's extended this at bat a little bit, and that's that's always a little bit tougher on a pitcher. And the payoff pitch from Bridgewater. Forstall watches it outside. Ball four. Forstall aboard with a leadoff walk and a good start for the Tigers here. Weather conditions at game time. Cloudy skies. Temperature 75 degrees. Short and Dom the relative humidity. At 76%, the wind, interesting, south-southeast at 14 miles an hour, gusting to 19, blowing across toward left field. So it is a factor in this big ballpark. Snap throw to first, just got back, trying to throw behind the runner. Was good. 1-0 uh, and to Pellegrin, and this is a really talented young player. Yes. Shortstop, sophomore, and he's already... Got a significant commitment, Kenny. Yes, he's he's committed to Tulane, which I love to see. That Tulane's starting to recruit the New Orleans area again. And uh, he's a good one. There's a bunt. Good one. Bridgewater fields it. Has to go to first. High. And a good job by Ufnak. Go up and get it and make sure he tapped that bag to get the out. Good sacrifice bunt by Pellegrin. Gets a runner to second with one out. Look, it's early in the game. This is a tough park to score runs in, so I like the the thought process of trying to advance a runner early. Yeah, uh, you know, yes or no. I mean, I, I see the advantage of it, but, you know, you work so hard on your hitting that, you know, I, I, as a coach, I used to hate to take the bat out of my kids' hands early in the game. Here's Lucas Salta from Maggio, the first baseman, the pitch on the way. Sails high and away. 310 hitter on the year. Lucas been outstanding. Of course, the family legacy is secure. His <laughs> older brother Nico at Nichols doing a great job on the mound for the Colonels. Of course, Dad, Joey, probably here tonight, my dear friend, who serves as the GM of the Copeland's properties all over the area. And his uncle, Nick, another very good friend, now the head football coach at Franklinton High School. After serving in wonderful fashion at so many schools as a head coach, Nick, at Chalmette, Oconee, Georgia, East Jefferson, won a state championship there. Holy Cross is alma mater. Now Franklinson working with Shane Smith, an outstanding principal and former great coach himself. Runner from second, the pitch. Fouled right side toward the line. Right fielder on the run, and he will get there for the out. Runner tags from second, will advance to third on the second out as Salta Formaggio flies in foul territory to Brothers and Ryan. They're going to say two outs, and that will bring Pierce Broadnax to the plate. Broadnax, the catcher, will step in at 291. Productive out, moving a runner. So got him on, got him over, got him over, but it takes something with two outs here. Right, going to have to get, you know, pass ball while pitch or an error. Other league play today, Archbishop Rummel defeated St. Augustine 10-2. Sweep that series. That's a fast strike. Other big game tonight is John Curtis and Brother Martin going on at Jay Gormley. No balls in a strike on Broadnax. Hey, 
Swing and a miss. Turn that one over away. Nice yes, pitch. That had great movement going away from the hitter. So it started at one spot, and you commit to that spot, and that ball keeps moving away. It's hard to make an adjustment. So it's no balls and two strikes on Pierce Brodnax. Catcher from the right side. Runner at third is Forstall with two outs. Shea the hitter to the opposite field. Big gap in left center. Time called by the hitter. Who now settles back in. Stretch. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. Catcher digs it out. Will throw to first. For the out. A K-2-3. Broadnax retired. No runs. No hits. And one man left on base. Head to the bottom of the first inning. Only cross nothing. And Jesuit to the play. So what did you see from Lee Bridgewater there on the mound that inning? Kenny? Well, I mean, nothing overpowering. But, you know, he's, he's, everything's around the plate. Really, really liked his off-speed stuff because it, it made his fastball look faster. Um, but, you know, he overcame, you know, the base runner that got on and was able to get out of it with no harm done. So, uh, you know, they're able to come to the plate and, and, and have a shot at taking a lead right off the bat. So bottom of the first arrives, and the Tigers... Taking to the field with Guichard left, four stall center, Sirkovich right. With Andre at third, Pellegrin short, Planter at second, and Salter Famaggio at first. Broadnax the catcher and on the mound. Right hander Cole Killian. I mean, he's got an ERA of 0.57. Right hander, you can see right away, little crossfire, not sidearm, but a little, little bit of a three quarter arm delivery. Hides the ball well, does Cole Killian. And again, it's the motion. That will get you a lot. That's particularly true if you're a right-handed hitter against Killian. Well, I mean, that pitch is just coming out of a zone that you seldom see. And, uh, you know, I'm watching him throw his warm-ups, and he hides the ball very, very well. And uh, he's going to have great movement that's going to move in on the right-handed hitters and away from the left hand. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I'm sure he's going to get a lot of balls hit off the handle. If he if he throws his breaking pitch in it, and it breaks away. He's going to get a lot of numbers. Um, the trouble is with guys throwing from this angle is that a lot of times if they get up in a zone, they get hit pretty hard. So, you know, if he can stay down in the zone, and I'm talking about thighs down, mm -hmm. I think I think he'll, uh, he'll be tough to hit. Finishing his warm-up tosses as we speak. And ready to roll here in the bottom of the first inning. Blue Jays will send Everett Denny, William Good, and Hunter Rufnack to the plate. Third baseman, Everett Denny. Here's Denny. 302, no homers, and nine RBI. Left handed swinger, always from the stretch is Killian, who delivers away for ball one. Great movement on that ball. I mean, his fastball's probably low 80s, but still is hard to hit when you got that movement. One ball, no strikes. Swing and a line drive and a left-up base hit. Everett Denny starts the Blue Jay bottom of the first. In good fashion, both teams have had the leadoff man aboard. And that is the first hit of the evening, which will bring William Good to the plate. And, and you know, that's a great piece of hitting there. The Catcher. ball is moving away William from him. Good. It's on the outside part of the plate. He didn't try and pull it. He just he just let the ball travel, and then he, he did a great job of hitting it opposite field. Here's good. Two-lane commit at 309. Two homers, 13 RBI for William. Pitch is high for ball one. Denny, of course, obtaining a, a solid leadoff first. Everett has swiped three bags on the year. Throw to first, runner back. Pitch is high for a ball, so it's 2-0 to William Good. 
He's got to get down in the zone for him to be effective. Right, not throwing hard. Right. Again, it's all about location and, of course, the deception in his delivery. Here it comes. Pops him up. Foul. Back and out of play. And the count to two and one on William Good. Just a solid player watching him a lot last year. Impressed. Good player. Uh, I'm glad another commit to Tulane. That's wonderful news. Two balls and a strike. And time call. Both pitchers a little bit deliberate thus far in how they work. Yes, both taking their time. From the belt, Killian to the plate. Missed away. Three balls and a strike to good, so a good pitch to hit on and a good pitch to put something on with if you're Kenny Goodlett here with pretty good speed at first. Good hitter at the plate. Favorable count. Let's see what happens. Not going. And the pitch is in in the air. Two center field. Should be easy for four stall circling under it and putting it away for our number one. So good skies to center. Denny returns to first. Hunter Ofnack to the plate. When last we saw Hunter on CrescentCitySports.com, he was busy winning the Most Valuable Player Award of the Championship Series of the Crescent City Sports Inaugural <laughs> Summer League, which Retief Oil won, defeating John Curtis in the title game. He had a pair of two-run singles in oh. the title game, did Hunter. Takes one away for ball one. Hunter at 396. Been the top hitter on the team this year, so he's carried it over. He has a home run and nine driven in. Play most of your games in this ballpark. Forget about the home run numbers. They really don't tell a story no. at all. Throw to first to uh -oh. chase Denny back. Hands first. I think I could go out there and throw in this ballpark. And I can't throw the home plate right now. Yeah, down the line is the only way to get it out of here. Got him picked off, and the throw goes oh. wide. Denny up and going to second, and he will be there on a throwing error. First area of the game that goes to Killian and that allows the runner to reach second. Kenny, he was picked off. Yes, he was out. He caught him leaning. Caught him leaning and uh, just could have made a better throw and he'd have had him. Sometime when you throw over to first base, you, you try to be too picky. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of just getting the ball down a little bit to the first baseman and you don't want to get too picky and, and that's what happened there. And he's kicking himself right now, too, because he, he, he knew he had him. Mm -hmm. Ground ball left side, deep in the hole. Tough play here. Throwing across his body, not in time. That's a base hit for Ufnak. Pellegrin did all he could deep into the hole. Wasn't hit hard enough, first off. And then secondly, the momentum carrying him way away from the play. Just didn't allow him to get enough on the throw, though he made a good play. That's a hit for Ufnak, second hit of the inning. Runners at the corners, one out, and now the D.H. Gates Barre. Right. And, and that's the type of ball that, that the pitcher's going to give up with that angle he's throwing at. That was way in on a hitter's hands. And, uh, I mean, Pellegrin did as good a job as he could do. Check of the runners on the corners, the pitch. Sails high, and when you said it earlier, it stayed the same when he's missing. Right. He's up. He, he's up high. He, you know, a, a, a side armor or a submarine or a three-quarters guy like this is not going to be effective up in the zone. Down and out, 2-0. and oh. Now, you can't start pressing. You're giving up a single uh, on the infield. And, uh, I mean, sometimes those hits bother you more than the bombs do. Outside, and now it is 3-0, and oh, so trouble brewing. Here, and that'll be a visit to the mound right. by Broadnax. And I think it's a good move to go talk to him here. So conversation ensuing. Quick word of encouragement <coughs> for Broadnax to Killian. Runners from the corners on 3-0. and oh. Jake coming here, right? And there's the automatic, three and one. Now, he's got to do two more like that here. 
Yeah, and and the, the great thing about it for him is the ground ball gets him out of the inning. Barry, the top RBI man on the team with 15. Here's the 3-1. And he swings and shoots it down the left field line into the corner. That is a foul ball by about two feet. Yep. Got the bat head out early. Just couldn't keep it in play. And they count full three and two. A loud foul ball. Ball was hit very well, but foul. Now, I mean, if you got confidence in the off-speed stuff here, you come back, change up a curveball, but you got to throw a strike. I mean, he just hit your fastball almost 300 feet. Three balls, two strikes. Keep an eye on the runner at first. Runners lead from the corners. There he goes. Pitch is fouled back. Stayed hard on him. Again, up in, the, up in the strike zone. Good job of fighting it off. Pitch was in a portion to Barre. And that's a good time to run right here. You know, you, you don't want a double play ground ball. You're probably telling your runner on third base, you're going on contact. On three and two, check of the runners. Nobody going this time. Ball four, base is loaded with one out. So two singles and a walk, and now a big opportunity for Alex Janson. Who heads to the plate? The Blue Jays' second baseman at 279, no homers and eight runs driven in for Jean Song. A senior, right handed swinger. Double play is in order here. <coughs> Tigers are open for that ground ball hit right at someone. They're in it first and third, which means they're probably coming to the plate on a ground ball. Second and short are going to turn two around second. Bases loaded, one up. Ground ball, base hit, left field. One run home. Two runs are going to score. The other runner for third. Runners at the corners. Jesuit takes a two to nothing lead. Just out of the reach of Pelgrim. Did a good job of trying to get over there, but it was about two feet to his right. Two nothing, Blue Jays, and a big inning, perhaps, in progress here. Left fielder, Patrick Berrigan. Here's Patrick Berrigan, the left fielder at 316, with no homers and five RBI. Runners lead again from the corners. And a safety squeeze fouls it behind the plate. I say that because runner at third's not breaking there. You're just counting on the batter to be able to put the ball in play. And if he does properly, the runner from third can make that read and break. That's, that's absolutely what that was. That was a safety squeeze. 0-1 oh the count. Gillian gets ahead. And the pitch. It's on again. It's executed perfectly. Runs going to score. Play is to first. It's wide. That's a base hit and an error. Runners continue on. And they're going to stop at second and third. It's 3 nothing Jesuit. That's an RBI single for Patrick Berrigan. And then the throwing error on the play by the third baseman. That's a tough play for the third baseman. I don't think he gets him even with a good throw. So I'll yeah, that's a base hit, no I mean, doubt about it. That's a base yeah. hit. So. Yep. Base hit, throwing error. Now, if, Second if, error already for Holy Cross and a visit to the mound. Now, I'm a good third baseman. I'm thinking I can still throw this guy out. But, but sometime you, you have to just accept the fact that this kid laid down a great bunt and I'm not going to get him. So long visit here. The bullpen is busy already for Holy Cross. With the right-hander up and throwing. <laughs> Everyone was part of that conversation. Probably just trying to settle everybody down a little bit. Right 
And that will bring up the right fielder, Michael, Michael Brothers. Brothers. Brothers at 353, no homers and three driven in. Second and third, still only one out with three runs home here in the first. And Holy Cross brought the infield in. They don't want to give him any more. Swing and a miss. Good off-speed pitch tailed away from the hitter. Nice change up. Yeah, I think they, they really have to in this situation, don't you? I, I agree. I, I don't like doing it, but, you know, you, you don't want to give them any more runs. No balls in a strike on Brothers. From the stretch to the plate. That's high and away. Again, up, and it's one and one. He hasn't found his zone yet. You know, mm -hmm. he hasn't been consistently down where he's got to be. Yep. One ball, one strike. Steps out. Ready once again, the right-hander Killian to the plate. Popped him up. Short left. That's not deep enough. Left fielder coming in. Keyshard's there. Makes the catch. And no advance. And that's a big out obtained by Killian. Big out on a, on a, on a changeup. That's a good pitch. Two gone for Jake Marisi, the sophomore shortstop. Shortstop, Jake Marisi. Here's Marisi. <coughs> Runner second and third, two outs. And a swing and a foul back. It's 0 and 1. That was a big out for the cross right there to get that second out. Now the infielders can play back and get a chance to make a play. No balls and a strike. And another from Killian. It sails way outside and low. Even up in a ball and a strike. He's holding on to that, that three-quarter fastball just a little bit too long. Too long, long. Yeah. yeah. Runner at third, Jean-Saint, and Berrigan second. Killian set. And pitching. Strike over the outside edge. Got the call, and it's one and two. Nice change up. One ball, two strikes, two on, two outs, three runs home Jesuit here in the bottom of the first inning. And here it is. High. Equals the count, two balls and two strikes. Good crowd. No doubt, and growing. Mm-hmm. Once again, the stretch. And time called again. Slow working here in the first inning on both sides. Yes. So the pace clearly not there. Saw the game at Mike Miley earlier today. It was like a three-hour game in seven innings, which Rummel defeated St. Augustine. <coughs> Ten to two. Two balls, two strikes, two on, two outs. Killian ready and bringing it. And that's way outside, so it is full. Three and two on Jake Marisi, of course. There is a base open. They're in the top of the third at Kirsch Rooney. John Curtis, three, Brother Martin, two. In the second game of that series. Swinging a foul back. John Curtis in the state championship game a year ago. Very good again. Brother Martin's been really good of late. Just playing excellent baseball. Three and oh in the league. Going into tonight against really good teams and Rommel and John Curtis. There's a ball hit to short. Gobbled up by Pellegrin. His throw is right on the money. And the inning is over. Eight men come to the plate. Three runs score on four hits. There were two errors and two men left. We've played one. Jesuit has jumped out to a 3 nothing lead on Holy Cross. Good start for the Blue Jays, but it could have been a bigger inning, Kenny. You know, very easily could have been a bigger inning. And, and, and... The Holy Cross was their own worst enemy there. You know, you can't make two errors in an inning against Jesuit. Good teams are going to take every advantage that they can take of, take care of, uh, when, when you're giving them base runners and giving them outs. 
So that inning, Holy Cross gave Jesuit five outs. Yeah. Can't do that. No, sir. No, sir, indeed you cannot. So now the Tigers will try to go to work offensively going to the second inning of this one. With a 3 nothing lead, Bridgewater on with that lead. Boy, you have to love that as a pitcher, right? You, oh. Your team comes to bat for the first time. They they stake you to a three-run lead. That's a great feeling, isn't it? Well, it's so much easier to go out and pitch when, when you have a, a, a one-run lead, much less a three-run lead. <clears throat> you know, your team has all the momentum. Now, you know, what you're saying to yourself here is I have to throw strikes. I can't give them base runners by walking anybody. <clears throat> yep. And, uh, you know, I, I, I want to go out and throw a three-pitch inning this inning, and let's get back in and get some more runs. So here in the second, the Tigers will send Will Andrade to the plate to be followed by Ryder Blanchard and Blake Chauvin. Will Andrade. Andrade to the plate from the left side. Third baseman, Andrade inning 259. First pitch to Will. Fastball foul out of play. Bridgewater, 14 pitches in the first. Eight were strikes. Walked one, struck out one. Yeah, did a good job of getting out of that first inning with a leadoff walk. Second pitch missing away. It's one and one. Three nothing. Blue Jays here in the second. Bridgewater stepped off again. Kind of slowly working here through this early part of the ball game. And the one one pitch. Missing away, two and one. So what you don't want to do with a three-run lead. <clears throat> two balls and a strike, and here it comes. Swinging a foul. Fastball. Got in on him a little bit, and it's two and two. Yes, he's a little late on it. <clears throat> Get that front foot down and get those hips through. Two balls, two strikes. Another on the way. And he froze him with a breaking ball. Struck him out looking. Quality pitch for round number one. Second consecutive strikeout for Bridgewater. Great, great breaking pitch. Started at the hitter, kind of froze him. You know, that, that, that's a knee bender. Second baseman, and, um, Ryder Plancher. And he just froze like a deer in the headlights. Ryder Plancher to the plate. Plancher to 326 hitter. The pitch to the second baseman is down for ball one. Good pitch, one. though. Goodness, that was close. Want to know the count? I know the catcher thought they had a strike. Next pitch hits him in the back. Base runner, Blanchard to first for the Tigers with one out here in the second. Three-run lead, and you hit a bat. Blake Chauvin to the plate. You ever, you ever wonder why uh, pitching coaches have gray hairs? I don't know. You have to tell me. <laughs> Three-run lead, you have a guy 0-1, and you hit him. Runner away from first. High and away, ball one. To Chauvin. <clears throat> great to see my friend, Father Brown, here tonight. Uh, boy, he does a great job. He's a good guy, too, and got a sense of humor. Oh, and look at this. Sailed over his head, got a piece of him. That's back-to-back -back hit batsman. By Bridgewater, who suddenly lost command. And it's two on via hit batters, and that'll prompt a quick visit to the mound. After you have back-to-back -back hit batters, you're going to visit the mound, right? As a head coach, you've been there, done that, right? I mean, I mean absolutely. will say, what the hell's going on? I mean, you, yeah. you, you're throwing the ball really well, and then you let two get away from you. 
literally. So everybody called in. And they have the discussion. This is the kind of, and we say this all the time, it's, it's cliche ridden as you can get, but in baseball, after you go out there and put up some runs, you want to have that shutdown inning to solidify it. Right, I mean, you know, it, it, it's not that it'll all go for waste, but, but let's say if Holy Cross comes back and gets a run or two here because you hit two batters. Um, you know, that, that puts Holy Cross back in the ball game. Here's Guichard, Aaron Guichard, 182 on the year, left fielder, with two on, one out. Cheating in at first is Ufnak, even with the bag of third, Denny. Bridgewater has the sign from Good. Long look, and pitching. Missing outside, ball one. And that's not close. That's a foot and a half off the plate. Ball and no strikes. That's a fast strike. It's one and one. It's a good pitch. Count even. A ball and a strike. Three nothing Blue Jays. Here in the second inning. From John Ryan Stadium in Metairie. Guichard from the right side. Runners away first and second. With one out. Shade him the hit to the opposite field. Big gap in left center and down the right field line. Bridgewater set in pitching. That's high. And the count to two balls and one strike. And again, you know, they're, they're, they're shading to right field to be a little later. And, and the ball is moving away from him. So if he's a good hitter, he's going to try and go that way with that pitch. On two and one. Here it comes. Foul back. He had a rip at a fastball. He had a up in the zone. That. Yes. And it's two and two. Two balls and two strikes. Ridgewater peers in for the sign once more. Ready now. Runners lead first and second. And here's the 2-2 pitch. Breaking ball struck him out swinging. That's strikeout number three for Big Lee. And that's two outs in the inning. And now Chris Serkovich to the plate. And he got away with one because that curveball right was up in his zone. It was Serkovich. the change of speed that got him out there. Serkovich, 280 hitter, right fielder. The runners first and second with two outs. Bridgewater, again, from the stretch position. Pitch on the way. Swinging a little looper to right. That's trouble. A base hit. Should score the run. Rounding third. Heading home is Blanchard. He will score. Second runner for third. The Tigers are on the board. It's 3-1. to one. So now here you go. You jump up 3-0 in the bottom of the first. You get the first man out. Then you hit two. And then a little dinker base hit. Still a base hit. Scores a run to make it 3-1. So... It gives Holy Cross a little momentum. Tying runs are aboard. We had two outs and you flip the order. And here's Brody Forstall who walked to start the game. Center fielder, Brody Forstall. Here's Forstall. That's way high, 1-0. Neither pitcher with the kind of command you want to see thus far. No, no, not at all. Particularly with the lead. You got to go back out saying to yourself, I, I want to get three ground balls and get back in a dugout. High and away, 2-0. and oh. So Forstall on a good count at two balls and no strikes. Trying to do some damage here. Again, they play Brody the other way. From the stretch, runners a lead from first and third. The 2-0. That is a strike call. Still, still up in the strike zone. Two balls and a strike.
Snap throw to first to chase Sirkovic back. Now, he hasn't thrown a regular move to first base yet, so I, I don't know what kind of move he has over there. Maybe he doesn't have a good move. From the stretch once more, Bridgewater the pitch. Fastball crowds him around the letters, and it's 3-1. and one. On Forstall, Telegren would be next. Nightfall has arrived here in Metairie. With the wind blowing toward left. The pitch, outside, ball four. Bases loaded, two out. So two hit batsmen and a walk in the inning, and now a big chance for Tom Telegren, who had the sacrifice bunt in the first inning. I mean, here's a great chance. And the bullpen will get busy for the Blue Jays. Absolutely. <clears throat> great opportunity for the Tigers to, to claw back into this. Gates Barre throws for Jesuit. Holy Cross Penn silent at the moment. Had been busy previously. As both pitchers Kyle have struggled early. Pellegrin. Here is Pellegrin. The two-lane commit. Sophomore. Really good-looking shortstop for Holy Cross. You were familiar with many of these young players. Did you spend some time there? Yes, good kids. Battle hard and battle tested. First pitch on the way to Dom is high. So we that's a familiar theme, high, up. Both yep. pitchers have been up fairly consistently. It's hard to stay in a ball game when you're up all night. And there's a strike called. It's one and one. An inside edge. Well, I could twist those words around. I'm up all night and I think about <laughs> ball games. How's that? Or I watch ball games in the middle of the night. Well, my yes, I do that too. Poor wife sleeping. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Wow, that's way outside and high. Again, that pitch an indication of not being comfortable and lacking command. 2-1 the count. Yeah, you, you can't. I mean, uh, these are know. not challenging pitches. I mean, you, no. what I mean by that is you got you got to be close to the zone to try to get the hitter to swing. It, it's totally different if you're just missing on pitches, but, but we're not just missing. Way high, three and one. So he threatens to walk one in here. Barre throws with a purpose in the bullpen. I, I know Dom's a pretty good hitter here, but I, I'd be taking strike two. I, I agree with you in you this know. situation. Down by two in the second with a right. big chance. The thought process, the three-two pitch should be as good as the three-one. And on three-two, they're running. From the full windup, Bridgewater has to one. throw a strike yeah. on three and one. And he missed outside. Yep. Ball four. That will play Chauvin. Other runners advance, and it's a 3-2 to two ball game. Pellegrin gets the RBI. And that might do it. So Barre is going to enter. Short night for Bridgewater, just unable to throw strikes consistently. Stake to that three-run lead. He just couldn't, couldn't control his arsenal here this evening. Well, you know, you know, we, we said earlier the two hit batters and then now two walks. You put Holy Cross back in the ballgame. And 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 one hit that I don't know if it bent the turf out in right field. But that that's what you get when you start walking people and hitting people. So the Blue Jays go to the bullpen. Gates Barre will take over a 5'11", 195 senior. Barre will be making his eighth appearance. That is highest on the team this season. Barre has been brilliant. He's 4-0 with a 0 0.42 earn run average. He has a save, but he also has two shutouts as a starter. So he has been nails. Barre, 16 and two-thirds innings. Overall, he's allowed just one run on seven hits in those 16 and two-thirds. You love this number. Two walks, right. 16 and two-thirds, and 20 strikeouts. You're talking about a good ratio? Right. It doesn't get any better than that, my friend. <laughs> There's a tremendous comfort zone if you're the coach when well, you can insert a hurler that you know is going to be in and around the strike zone and has been a guy that hasn't been hit either. He's going to throw strikes and that's that's what it's all about. You know, he's going to throw strikes. Now pitching for the Blue Jays number four Gates Barre. So Barre to the mound. 
Runners occupying every base, a one-run game. And here's a tough hitter in Luca Salta Famaggio at the plate. Salta Famaggio flew out to right. Running catch by Brothers in foul territory in the first. Base is loaded, two outs. First pitch on the way. Swing and a foul. He had a cut. Barry goes in, pumping strikes. It's 0-1. Salta Famaggio expecting that. Went up there trying to give his team the lead. They play him honest. A lot different than the others. They play him straight up defensively. Given both lines. It's a big outfield here with huge gaps. This is the ultimate triple spark. 0-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Boy, good pitch away. And it's 0-2 as Barre quickly gets ahead. I'm noticing how deep third base is playing. Third base is almost on the outfield grass. No balls and two strikes with the sign from Good. The pitch. Swing and a ball hit toward the gap in right center. That's a base hit. One run is home. Two runs score. Holy Cross takes a 4-3 to three lead on a two-run single by Luca Salta Fromaggio. Big time hit there. Behind in the count, 0-2. And, and he just went with the pitch and knocked it hard in the right center field. That, that's too good a pitch, 0-2. Way too good a pitch, 0-2. So the Tigers answer in a big way. And capture the lead here. And of course, those runs are charged to Bridgewater. Catcher End up with first Pierce and third. Brodnack. And here's Pierce Broadnax, the catcher, who struck out swinging in the first. <laughs> swinging a foul. Good cut by Broadnax. Ninth batter to hit in the inning. Coming in throwing strikes. You just you just have to make a better pitch, oh too. Make him hit something that, that you want to throw. Runners at the corners with two outs. The pitch. Fly ball. Short right center field should end the inning. Center fielder there. And Scout Hughes puts it away. Inning over, but a big inning for the Tigers who push four runs across the plate. They do it on two hits with no errors in strand two. They've left three, bottom of the second. And Holy Cross on top of Jesuit, four to three. A couple of crooked numbers. What an answer there by the Tigers. That's a great answer by Holy Cross. Again, you know, what did they get? They got, they got two hits. They got four runs on two hits because of two hit batters and two walks cannot put runners on base as a pitcher against good teams and expect to win. It puts pressure on your infielders to make plays. You know, look at the pressure that, that, that Jesuit put on Holy Cross. And Holy Cross made two errors because of, of base running, because of punts. And in turning around, look at the pressure that they put on themselves by hitting two batters and walking two people and Holy Cross being able to score four runs on two hits. And you talk about infusing a pitcher. Oh. After Killian struggled in the first, now he's got a lead in this game. Right. Now he's got to come in and, and, and get out of this without giving up a run. So Killian going back to work. He had to throw 29 pitches in the first inning. Hmm. Way too many. Closed the book on Bridgewater. One and two thirds innings. Only one hit, but four runs earned. Walked two, struck out one, hit two. Could lose, cannot win. And the Blue Jays go back to work offensively in the second. It'll be Scout Hughes, then flip the top of the order. It's Everett Denny and William Good, who will follow. Yep, they got to come out now, and now Holy Cross is saying the same thing. Now we got some momentum. We got a whole Jesuit to no, to no run. Number zero, Trace Thomas. 
the batter is center fielder. And we get a new pitcher. It's not going to be uh, Killian. They're going to go to Thomas here in the second inning. So Tigers pull their starter after one inning. And they go to Trace Thomas here in the second. So Trace Thomas takes over on the mound after Killian goes one inning. Thomas takes over. And here is Hughes. And here is the pitch. And that's a line fly ball left center field. That's going to get to the gap. Base hit. Left fielder over to cut it off. Rounding first, Hughes. He's going to stop there, and the leadoff man is on yet again. Uh, Thomas greeted with a single. And that's a nice play by that left fielder to cut that ball off and hold it to a single. Good start here for the Blue Jays. Third and Everett Denny, who bats, he singled Everett his first time Denny. and scored a run. Heads to the plate here. Check of the runner. The pitch. Missed the outside edge. The line on Killian was one inning. Four hits, three runs earned. Walked one. Off the hook here. Yes, off the hook. Missing. It's 2-0. And that missed outside, so it's 3-0. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's the same scenario. Holy Cross goes up 4-3. They want to get out of this and stay ahead 4-3 and, and then give up a leadoff single and then fall behind 3-0. Strike called, it's 3-1. Calls him back to the plate. Three balls and a strike. Denny waits. Thomas pitches and a swing and a ground ball. Base hit right field. Stopping in second is Hughes. Here come the Blue Jays again. Two on, nobody out. William Good to the plate. Don't see a whole bunch of high-scoring games here. This one, at least early on, has a look of a little bit of a shootout. Yes, it does. Uh, I mean, Jess was putting the ball in play. Uh, Holy Cross yes, had some... William Good. Some base runners given to them. And uh, I mean, you just don't see that that often from these two teams. Here's Good. Flew out to center his first time. Not bunting and down and out ball one. I mean, the bunt certainly would be in order here. But you got a very good hitter at the plate. Catcher to the mound. No, not in the second inning. I wouldn't be bunting this guy. That's what I just said. Yeah. Good hitter. <laughs> I, I concur. <laughs> But I would understand if they did. Correct. Now this conference must be something about signs or some with the guy on second base. Or I'm sure that's what that was about. Catholic High, Baton Rouge, defending state champion, looked like the team to beat again this year. Today they they beat Mandeville one nothing on a walk off in Baton Rouge. Wow. 1-0 the count on William Good, who steps out. Runners away first and second with nobody out. Again, very slow-moving affair. And another. That is a strike called. And it is a ball and a strike. High School Baseball on Crescent City Sports is brought to you by the Lamarck Motor Company in Kenner. Lamarck Ford, the number one Ford dealer in the Metro New Orleans market, must be a reason. A ball and a strike on good. Thomas ready, Trace pitching. Bob foul, right side, out of play. Vehicle alert, and yep, unfortunately, Big U tells you what you need to know. <laughs> Ouch. One and two the count. I, ho I hope they're not oohing or about my car getting Oh, hit. boy. <laughs> One and two the count. Here it comes. Down and out. Nice pickup by the catcher, Broadnax. It's two and two. Good job blocking that ball. Well, as always, the concept of strategic parking for baseball games. 
So I pull in it a lot, and I see where Larry DeGate parked, and I just park next to him. So <laughs> I figured he knows where to park. So. Well, you know, and, you know, he, <laughs> he, he, he's going to park safely. Yeah, that's my point. I'm, that's a veteran there, okay? No rookie move here. All right? Two and two the count. Here it is. Foul back. You know, I, speed pitch. I do games and cover games at Kirsch Rooney, and, and I do Delgado broadcast for Joe Sherman. And Joe's got the strategy. He says, yeah, just park behind me. You'll <laughs> never get hit. So and that's been the case for several years now. Speaking of which, at Kirsch Rooney, top of the fourth, Brother Martin has taken a 4-3 to three lead on John Curtis. <laughs> In the air, out of play once more. Still holding it two and two. First pitch was at 7.04. We're 50 minutes in, and we're in the bottom of the second inning in this one. Might yes. have to get the coffee <laughs> brewing here at some point. Uh, a slow mover. Hot chocolate? I don't know. No, not hot chocolate. No, tonight. coffee. All right, well, I mean, I'm just <laughs> suggesting. 2-2. Two -two. Popped him up. Good pitch. Good movement down in the zone. Second baseman out. Center fielder in. Second baseman planchard. For the catch, a big out, good retired, one gone, no advance. And now Hunter Oofnack, and you hear the oof, Jan Hunter. Stroked a single his first time, scored a run. Nice job by that second baseman. You know, what you're taught as an infielder is on a fly Hunter ball like that. Mm -hmm. It is your ball until yeah. somebody calls you off. Right. And he did a good job of getting back on it and getting underneath it. Here's Ufnak, first and second, one out. Thomas pitching and a swing and a foul. It's 0-1. Another. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's two. And the oohs and ahs continue. Man, oh, man. <laughs> As Bruce Miller used to say. Great broadcaster from the 60s oh, and my. 70s. Well, he was a mentor for me. He gave me my first chance to do a game. 0-1. There's a little looping line drive. Base hit right center field. Runner rounds third. He heads for the plate. This game is tied. RBI single oof. Now he's two for two. Let's start over again at 4-4. Scout Hughes scoring. Denny Good base running to third. As men mentioned, Oofnack is now two for two. And the Blue Jays have tied it. And, and you know, give the Blue Jays credit. They've come out and they've, they've gotten three hits. <clears throat> Holy Cross is not really doing them Pitcher, Gates, to hurt Barre. themselves here. It's Jesuit getting hits. Now Gates Barre, who started the game as the DH, he is the pitcher now, so you don't lose that spot in the order. He's simply the pitcher now. Clean up hitter and a good one. Barre walked and scored in the first inning. Go ahead and run at third. Another runner at first, one out. And hard hit Ooh. ball of the pitcher. Knocks it down, throws to second. One back to first. And out at first, a double play. One, six, three on a ball that was smoked right at Thomas. Self-defense, knocked it down, made a strong throw, brilliant play, then a good turn by Pellegrin, and they get the double play. What a way to get out of the inning there on the one, six, three twin killing, Kenny. What a play by the pitcher. You have a shot hit back at you. I don't think it hit his glove. I think it hit him. And he has enough sense to turn around and get the guy at second and a good turn at, at second base to get the guy at first. I mean, what a great defensive play. And it was the hardest hit ball of the game. Absolutely. Me, I'm running the hell out of there. I'm, I'm getting the heck out of there instead of trying to stay in front of that and making a play. Great play. And, and give Barre credit. He hit the heck out of the ball. Boy, did he ever. And, and he's hustling down the line trying to get down there and does a head first slide at first base to try and keep away from the double play. What an interesting game this is early on. Yes. 4-4 four, four as we go to the third inning. And back to the mound goes Barre after he just smoked that pitch and he had to dive or he tried to dive in the first base so catch his breath a little bit and he drops a ball on a return so that's uh make sure he's ready to roll here right right and and 
I hope somebody's checking on a Holy Cross pitcher. Yeah, I, I think he caught his glove, Kenny. I, Did it? Yeah, I didn't see anybody react otherwise, you know, to check on him. So I believe that was the case. So. Well, that's a great defensive play by that young man. He did a great job, and, you know, kudos to him for hanging in there and turning that double play. Because if he doesn't turn a double play there, it's 5-4. And the inning is building. Right. Third baseman, Will Andrade. Here's Will Andrade to start the third inning. Andrade struck out looking in the second inning. Swing and a miss, threw it by him, it's 0-1. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Oh, nice off-speed pitch, swing and a miss. Nice pitch. Down in the zone and he chased it. Quickly ahead, 0-2. And, and a swing and a foul left side. Keeps Andrade at the plate. Holding it 0-2. And a swing and a fly ball left field. Should be handled toward the line. Berrigan makes the catch for round number one. Yep. 0-2 pitches are way too good. One gone in the frame, and here is Ryder Planchard hit by a pitch. Scored a run in the second inning. Ryder Blanchard. Blanchard hits it foul. No balls and a strike. Barre is definitely a strike thrower. Very much so. I mean, again, as advertised. Another on the way. Fast strike to your point. Quickly 0-2 on Blanchard. He's getting ahead of hitters consistently. And you can't make a bad pitch here. Here's the 0-2 on the way, way outside. It's 1-2. and two. Ball and two strikes. And the next breaking ball swung on and missed. Boy, took a lot off and had Blanchard way out in front. Fans him for out number two, strike out number one for Barre. Great curveball. Did a good job of setting it up and then gets it down That's in the zone. Two gone for Blake Chauvin. Chauvin hit by a pitch in the second and scored a run. Out of a slight crouch from the right side, he hits. And the pitch from Barre. That sails high for ball one. Tied at four, top of the third. Popped him up. Should end the inning. Shortstop wants it. Marisi caught it. Quick inning. Good inning for Barre to settle things down. Bottom of the third coming. Still tied. 4-4 here at John Ryan Stadium. Well, as a pitcher, you had to like that, right? Had to like that quick inning. Had to like the fact that, that he goes out there and, and shuts down the Tigers. And now, you know, the Blue Jays and they have a chance to jump ahead here. Uh, I learned how I liked how fast he worked. Um, you know, I mean, he, he, the mistake he made uh, in the inning that Holy Cross got some runs was he made a too good 0-2 pitch that was hit for a single, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, threw threw a couple of two good two strike pitches there. But yeah, when you mean by too good is. Too much of the plate when right. you're heading to count, you want to make them chase, right? Right. Oh, oh, pit, oh, two pitch. You want hitters to chase your pitches to pitch. Mm -hmm. You want him either chasing your good curveball down in the strike zone like he did for a strikeout. Yeah. 
or, you know, throw a pitch off the plate that he's got to chase. You know, the, the 0-2 pitch should not be hit. Yeah. I'm with you. Trace Thomas back to the mound to work in his second inning. We'll be dealing with Alex Johnson, Patrick Berrigan, and Michael Brothers here in the third inning. Tied 4-4. That's a good inning for, uh, for Barre. Alex Johnson. Yeah, it really kind of settles things down a bit after what has been a kind of a frenetic first couple of innings. Right, absolutely. You know, where Jesuit jumps ahead in the bottom of the first, Holy Cross comes back and jumps ahead in the top of the second. Jesuit yep. comes back and ties it in the bottom of the second. Johnson hits it foul down the third base side. Single home, two runs in the first. Biggest blow of the game for the Blue Jays. Now, he just hit your fastball foul. Now, how about throwing a changeup or a good curveball? Good pitch. Didn't get the call. Hit the glove where the catcher set up. You can see he wanted that. Might have been just a, a ball off the plate. You know, when I say a ball, I mean a baseball. That close. One and one the count. And again, what you're looking for is that strike zone to identify as a pitcher and a catcher that you can pitch to consistently. Here it is. Line drive, left field, base hit. Johnson's two for two. He's having a night, and the Blue Jays have the leadoff man on for the third consecutive inning. That was a pretty good pitch that he went and got and hit that line drive the left field. Left fielder, Patrick Berrigan. Here's Berrigan who... Single homer on his first time. A beautiful safety squeeze bunt. Runner away from first. Toward third, diving stop. Andrade, strong throw. Heck of a play. Andrade with a brilliant play. For the Tigers to get Berrigan for out number one with Johnson advancing the second. Now, you know, that's a tough play by that third baseman to make. You know, yeah, he's is. playing in. Yep. He's playing in because last time he bunted. Right fielder. And uh, he makes Brothers. a nice play. Uh, I like that one. Absolutely great play. One out for Michael Brothers. Flew out to left his first time. And he bunts toward third, hugging the line, but going foul. It's 0-1. Trying to bunt for a hit, brothers. We'll return to the plate. I'm not that small ball of a guy, but, you know. Well, that's that's money for a hit. That's right. certainly not trying to advance anybody. Trying to drop one down, and he would have definitely beaten it out had it been fair. The pitch. Oh, it hit the mound towards short. Fielded Pellegrin. Stayed with it. Strong throw to get him on a close play. Boy, that's a tough chance. Really good job by Pellegrin. That ball was smoked. It hit the back of the mound, and that really helped Holy Cross. The ball kicked up for Pellegrin, and boy, he showed off his arm there. Yes, that's a nice play by that by that young kid. He he does a great job over there in short Cut for the Tigers. Up, Jake Morisi. So runner to third, two outs for Jake Morisi. Who grounded out to short his first time. Check of the run of the pitch. It's high, ball one. Work, working from the stretch by choice. Yes, I, I would let my pitchers work with whether, whatever they would feel more comfortable with from the stretch or from the windup here. Want to know the count? On Maurice, he's driven in seven. Fine young sophomore here. Took it for a strike. It's one and one. I would also tell my pitchers to remind them if they work from the windup, when they start their windup, they have to check the runner at third yeah. base. They just cannot be oblivious to him. One and one the count. Fouled. It's one and two. 
Another one. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm getting to be a nervous wreck here. But <laughs> I hear you, buddy. <laughs> of course, Jake, the son of a really good ball player, Ryan Morisi. He's a terrific player. He's in Archbishop Rommel's Hall of Fame for his baseball exploits. One and two the count. Ready once more, Thomas. The pitch. Foul back. Marisi hanging. As much as, as you'd love to see guys you know that played with you or played after you at a high school to see their sons go back yeah. to the high school, you know, you got to leave it up to the kids. Yep. You know, it's all about peer pressure and where their friends are going and where they feel comfortable. On one and two. Deep breath pitch, Thomas. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Hitting over, threat over. No runs a hit or runner stranded. That's four left for the Blue Jays through three innings. We are tied 4-4. Jesuit and Holy Cross. So good job by Thomas to get out of that, Kenny. And, boy, you have to go back to that play that Andrade made during that inning. That really changed things, didn't it? Absolutely. You know, a ball hit like that to be able to turn two on. Well, now the one that he... He threw him out oh, at first. Great play. Right, I mean, right. diving stop. Great play. Right. Great play at third base. And, you know, the, the thing is, is that he was in because he bunted last time. So it, it, it kept him from turning two. But for him to be able to make an out on that play, uh, I mean, just a great play. Just a great play defensively. Holy Cross has, even though they, they made two errors in the first inning, mm -hmm. they've made some tough plays. You know, the, the, the Pellegrin play, you know, the play at third base last inning. I mean, uh, uh, other than those two errors, they've turned it around and they've made some great plays defensively. It's four runs, eight hits, no errors. Jesuit with four left. It's four runs, two hits, two errors, three left for Holy Cross. As we enter the fourth inning, uh, high school baseball on uh, Crescent City Sports is brought to you by the Lamarck Motor Company at Kenner. Lamarck Lincoln is the only Lincoln black label dealership in the market. It's more than ownership. It's membership. Must be a reason. Lamarck Ford and Lamarck Lincoln, we deeply appreciate running Lamarck and his continual support of our efforts here at CrescentCitySports.com. Could not do it without him. Aaron Guichard leads it off here in the fourth. Guichard struck out swinging in the second inning. Pitch on the way. Sails away for ball one. Up and away. Well, he's been getting ahead of every hitter, too, by and large, yeah. with one or two exceptions. That is a strike, and it is one and one. And he works much quicker, too, I might add. Yes, I like that. Barre, ball in hand, ball in glove, ready to work. Sign given. And time call. That time he took a little too long. He just followed through with the pitch because he was already starting his motion. And I think a lot of people teach that, and understandably so. Well, I, I do. And, yeah. and, I, and I tell the kids if you start your wind up and they get a timeout, continue with the motion. Down and out to Guichard. It's two and one. Serkovich and Forstall will follow. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Fly ball center field right at Scout Hughes. He's got it for round number one. That's called positioning the defender perfectly for the hitter. One gone, and here is Chris Serkovich, who singled home a run in the second inning. Right fielder. And scored a run. Chris Serkovich. So here's Serkovich in from the right side. Barre looks into good and pitches and a square to bunt as he loves to do, but he took that high and away ball one. Pretty impressed with Gates throwing strikes like he does. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Trying to bunt it, missed it, was trying to bunt for a hit. It's one and one. I love the threat of the bunt, and I like seeing an offense trying to make infielders move. 1-1. One, one. Oh, good breaking ball. Checked it. He did not go. Oof. A quality pitch and just laying off with Sergovich, and it's 2-1. and one. That's, a, that's a great pitch right there. Two.
Two and one the count. Ground ball, deep hole. That's a base hit. Diving stop by Marisi, but no need to throw. He did, but it's yeah. a base hit for Sirkovich, and he's two for two out of the nine hole. Boy, that's a that's a real bonus, like having a second leadoff hitter, isn't it? Absolutely, and and that's that ball has eyes to get into the hole there. Center fielder and really shortstop made a great play. Just there's just, just no way of throwing him out. Brody Forstall, bats, leadoff man for the Tigers. And down the ball, 1-0. Oh. Line drive, base hit, right field. Four stalls off for the third straight time. Runners first and second. Nobody out as he jumped on that pitch and hammered it to right. That ball was with hit one hard. out here. That ball was hit very hard, and it, it actually it was hit so hard it prevented the runner from going to third. Short stop. Dom. Here's Dom Pellegrin who's had a sacrifice bunt, and he walked a bases loaded walk to plate a run in the second inning. Runners away first and second. Ground ball, third base side foul. As Pelican tried to hammer one on his first swing. It's so in one. Runners return to first and second. Boy, uh, they go to the fifth inning of Kirsch Rooney. Brother Martin is playing some outstanding baseball. They lead John Curtis Christian 7-3. to three. Wow. Trying to sweep that series from a really good team. And they've already swept Rumble. That's really impressive. 0-1 the count. Runners lead the pitch. Tap foul. He was out in front of an off-speed pitch, and now Barry ahead of Pellegrin 0-2. Now, again, you, you don't want to make a stupid pitch here mm -hmm. and put something over the plate that he can drive. Make him swing at your pitch. 0-2 the count. And then, of course, you know, Pellegrin's saying, I, I have to protect the plate. Men on base, I don't want to get called out here. No balls and two strikes. Oh, he took it just off the plate. It's one and two. That's a good pitch, 0-2, though. Right. That's the pitch you're talking about. Right. That, you know, just off the plate, make it competitive, try to get a swing. Make him try and chase something that's not a strike. But that's a competitive pitch. Right. Which that was. But it is one and two. Stretch again. Step off. A lot of stressful innings for these pitchers tonight. A lot of base runners to deal with. On, on both squads. No question. Yeah. First and second one up. Delegrin at the plate. Barre peering in for the sign. One, two. And a little looper towards short is caught by the shortstop, Marisi. Round number two. Got that off the end of the bat. Couldn't get much on it. And right. Marisi handled it easily. So now two on but two outs. And here's Luca Salta Formaggio. Had a big two run single. Luca Salta Formaggio. In the second inning for the Tigers, which tied the game. That's with two on two outs here. Pitch. Fast strike. Barre gets ahead. Good pitch. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with his, with his strikes that he throws. Both teams 2-1 and one in District 9-5A play. Brother Martin 3-0. and oh. Early on in district play. Rumble now 2-2. 0-1. Two two. Oh, 
And a drive to left field. Left fielder back, back, back. That's over his head. Salta from Maggio comes through. One run home. Two runs are going to score. Two run double. Luca Salta from Maggio. And Holy Cross has a 6-4 to four lead. Have a night, Luca. Four RBIs already for Salta from Maggio. That ball was really hit, Kenny. That ball was hit very well, and the wind's blowing out the left field. Um, I probably would have liked to have seen, you know, particularly my left field, to play a little bit deeper. I thought he was a little bit shallow, but, uh, I mean, that I can't make that call for those coaches. You know, they, they know what these hitters are and, you know, what kind of pitcher I got. Yeah, Berrigan had no chance. That ball was well over no, his head. No, he was, he was turning and running at full speed off the bat. Here is Pierce Brodnax with two outs and a two-run lead. Another runner in scoring position. Brodnax is struck out and fly to center. Pops him up right side. First baseman on the run, Ufnak there, and he dropped the ball. Inning continues. Now let's see what happens. Well, what should have been the third out. Right, let's see what happens after this now. That has to go as an error on a very catchable ball and extends the inning, and it's a one first error on the Blue Jays. Lead from second, Salter from Maggio. 0-1. Down, runner for third. No throw, wild pitch. Yep, and the catcher did a good job of blocking that ball, but it got away from him a little bit. So it's a ball and a strike. Down and out, it's two and one on Broadnax. And another. Ground ball is short. Marisi gobbles it up, sets and guns right on the money. Inning over about the Tigers. Retake the lead as they score two runs on three hits with an error. Strander runner, they've left four. We're on to the bottom of the fourth. It's Holy Cross six and Jesuit. Four. And yeah, boy, Luca Salta from Maggio is the story. Two hits and four RBIs already. And the two out, two runs, say, the two out, a two, run, two run double, I should say. Anytime you get those big two out hits, it separates winners from losers. Oh, no question. And, you know, it's, you got a kid out there that's throwing strikes. So, you know, he's not walking, guys. So you, you got to give Jesuit, I mean, you got to give Holy Cross credit. Well, they came up and they got the big hit when they needed to. Um, you know, wind's blowing out the left a little bit and, and got over the left fielder's head. Um, I mean, we, we, we got ourselves a ball game here. Back and forth we go. Trace Thomas now, the pitcher of record, as he returns to the mound. And he'll face Scout Hughes, Everett Denny, and William Good in the fourth inning. Catcher just getting out there after having finished the last inning. Boy, you hate that. Catcher makes the last out. He's got to go gear up, right? Just protector. And, and you know, he's hustling. He's Shin trying. guards, he's, yeah. You know, it's. So here's Hughes to get it started in the bottom of the fourth inning. For the Blue Jays, Scout Hughes singled and scored in the second inning. Blue Jays have eight hits in the game. They've out hit Holy Cross 8-5, but the Tigers lead it 6-4. to four. Oh, 
Open stance right side used, and a lot of time taken here. I mean, with a leadoff hitter to take that much time on the mound's a bit much. Slow. <laughs> now ready. First pitch on the way. Toward third foul. Was out in front of that and hooked it. It's 0-1. And, and thus the concept of the rule changes in baseball. Major League Baseball starts next week. It's going to be extremely interesting to watch how many violations take place because they're going to enforce those rules strictly to move the level of play and the <coughs> speed of play along. It's worked very well. In spring training games are down by like 24 minutes. Oh, they really? Yeah, on average. I mean, significant amount of time. The average time reduced in spring training games. Here's the 0-1. Down a ball. Look, the game just plays better when it moves. And a lot of that has to do with how fast or slow pitchers work with visits by catchers, visit by pitchers, stepping out by hitters, all of those things. The Professional baseball is addressing. The only thing one, I, one is high, two and one. I don't like is the pickoff rule. Mm-hmm. About how many? Yeah, you know. I mean, you know, if, if you make that second pickoff move to first base, that first baseman knows you can't come over. I mean, I mean, the, the guy the base runner knows, and yeah. the opposing coach knows. He knows I, he can't come over there anymore. I mean, goodness gracious, I, I think that's going to be a problem. Grounded foul over toward the Tiger dugout off the bat of Hughes. It's even up at two balls and two strikes. But I, I am, I was a skeptic. Mm hmm. But I didn't go see a big league game, but I went and saw Tulane when they were playing out at Irvine. Mm -hmm. And it, it, makes the, it makes the game move. I loved it. Yep, it's filtered down to the college level from professional baseball. Two and two the count. Ready the pitch. Popped him up. Had him reaching. Second baseman once it planchard. Camped under it and securing it for out number one. And again, you know, I was a pitcher that worked fast, so mm -hmm. it wouldn't bother me. But these guys that like working slow, and yeah. uh, I think it's really going to affect Third some of those guys. Everett Denny. High School Baseball and Crescent City Sports brought to you by Gibbs Construction, a leader in the construction industry in Louisiana and the Gulf Coast for more than 45 years. Transforming dreams, visions, and plans into reality, Gibbs Construction. One gone for Everett Denny. Batted twice, single twice, scored a run. What you want your leadoff man to do, right? He's been all that tonight. Get on base and score. Stretch and the pitch. Breaking ball high, 1-0. And, oh. and what a fan Larry Gibbs is for high school. Oh, baseball. just a great friend, just yeah. a wonderful man, just one of the <laughs> finest people you'll ever meet. Loves high school sports. Time called, and of course, he was a Coriezu grad whose two sons, Brian and Emerson, were stars at Jesuit High School. 1 0. That's high and away, 2 0. Ready once more, the 2 0 pitch to Denny. Right down the middle, it's 2 and 1. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. A 6-4 to four lead for the Tigers over the Blue Jays. On two and one. Ready the pitch. Took it over but high, and it's three and one. What do you, you think the zone is a little tight tonight or, or not? I mean, you're no. not calling a high one, that's for sure. I don't. I don't think the zone is tight at all. Okay, I'm asking. Yeah. I, I'm not saying. I'm just asking. Yeah, no. Three and one. The count. And another. Popped him up. Foul out of play. It's full three and two. Uh, our, our two starting pitchers had trouble getting the ball down. Mm -hmm. Everything was up in the zone. Yep. Um. Uh, everybody else tonight has been around the plate or close. But I, I don't I don't find that it's been tight at all. Three balls, two strikes with one out. Danny waits. Thomas the payoff. Ground ball to the pitcher. He drops it. Now throws it and still got him. Wanted to run over toward first, but forgot the ball for a second, but was poised enough to recover to get his man two gone. 
I know there's some coaches that teach that, that teach that to the pitchers, to, to run halfway over there and they get the ball over. Right? I'm like, just step and make a throw. William Good is fly to center, pop to second. The pitch. Strike call. There's the high strike. It's 0-1. Now, that's the first time that's been called tonight. No balls and a strike straight up defensively. The Tigers position themselves for good. The pitch from Thomas. That's outside. And it's one and one. From the stretch once more. With the one one. Fly ball down the right field side, slicing toward the line. Foul, right fielder, diving effort. Slides into that turf. Great effort by Sirkovic. Couldn't quite get there. And that's a sellout play by that young man. It's one and two. Great effort. Great effort. Love it. Covered a lot of ground. Sure did. One and two on good. Take his time getting back in. Julane commit. From the stretch once more. The one-two pitch good. Pops it up again to the second baseman. Second straight time. And it's put away by good. His counterpart Blanchard at second base. Inning over. One, two, three inning. And that's six in a row set down by Trace Thomas. We've played four. Holy Cross on top of Jesuit. Six to four. Well, you've got to give Trace Thomas a lot of credit. He's really settled this game down for the Tigers. And, and that's, that's exactly what I was going to say. You know, his team goes up two runs. He's got to come out and, and, and put a zero up there for the, uh, for the Blue Jays. And he came out and he does it. Blue Jays back to the field of fifth. Tigers trying to play add-on with a 6-4 lead. Six runs, five hits, two errors, and four left for the Tigers. It's four runs, eight hits, one error. Four left for the Blue Jays. Waiting for Gates Barre to get back to the mound. Oh, and I did not realize that uh, they were having that type of a time change with the, uh, with the new rules. That's great. It's been significant in the preseason I, in exhibition season hugely successful in terms of accomplishing what professional baseball wants to accomplish so back to the mound goes Barre as we get ready to start the fifth inning it will be Will Andrade Ryder Planchard and Blake Chauvin to the plate. Pelicans late third have an 81-78 lead on Charlotte tonight in a game they have to win. Against the 23 and 50 team. <laughs> Brandon Ingram 25 points with 10 assists already for the Pelicans and 7 rebounds. He could be on his way to a triple-double. They're probably going to need every inch of it. The way that game's unfolding. So the fifth inning getting set to begin here at John Ryan Stadium. Gates Barre came in in the second inning, relieving Lee Bridgewater. He is the pitcher of record right now. Will Andrade. Here's Andrade to the plate. Swings and hits it straight up. It's going to come down eventually on the infield. The third baseman there making the catch, Everett Denny. One pitch, one out, Andrade 0 for 3. And the batter will be Ryder Planchard. Planchard has been hit by a pitch, scored a run, and he's popped a short. Second baseman, Ryder Planchard. Here's Planchard.
First pitch. Sails high for a ball. One and oh the count. Bunts it. Pitcher comes to get it. Bare hand, spin and throw, got his man. Nice Good play. job of fielding his position by Barre. Nice play. He did exactly what you needed to do. Just rock and throw. If you don't have time to take that, that little crow hop step to make a throw. As he's going down, his weight is shifting on his back foot. Gets the ball, and he just shifts his weight to throw. Two gone for Blake Chauvin, who's been hit by a pitch, scored a run, and he's popped to short. Swing and a miss. Chauvin back in. Another. A time was called before the delivery could be made. Barry wanted the work quick, but Thomas Grant. Well, that's exactly what we're talking about with the rule changes. They're not going to allow that. <clears throat> right. Nine out of ten times anymore in pro ball. Here it comes. Just missing the outside edge. One and one. The one one. Fly ball, left field side, toward the line on the run. Berrigan foul territory up against the fence. He caught it. What a play by Patrick Berrigan. Giving up his body, staying with it all the way, going to his knees, hitting the fence, securing the baseball, inning over. A one, two, three frame for Gates Barre, thanks to the outstanding play of his left fielder, Patrick Berrigan. In the inning, nothing across. Let's take a stretch from John Ryan, heading to the bottom of the fifth inning. It's still the Tigers, six, and the Blue Jays, four. Uh, just a terrific play there, right? And, uh, I mean, I don't know how much ground he covered, but I thought there was no chance he was getting to that, and he was able to get there and make a great play. See if that inspires his team to bigger things here, trailing by two. Right, and, and, and what it did, I mean, what does Barre throw? 12 pitches that inning? 13 pitches, maybe? Yeah, I mean, it, no, no, fewer than that. Yeah. Six, to be precise. Six, there you go. So, what a great play. So, back to the mound goes Trace Thomas. He's been a real hero in this game for Holy Cross coming into pitching. Second inning. He's going into his fourth inning of work now. He's only allowed one run. And it's just done a very good job. And here, in the bottom of the fifth, he'll face three, four, and five. In the Blue Jay lineup, Ufnak, Barre, and Johnson. First base yes, he's done a great job of coming Hunter in Ufnack. and holding the Blue Jays at bay. Here's Ufnak. He's two for two with an RBI and a run scored. Rufnak trying to get something started here. Blue Jays have had the leadoff man on three times in four innings. Tiger bullpen is going to get busy. Pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. He swung at a pitch down and out of the zone. A bit anxious. It's 0-1. Yeah, good curveball down in the zone, and he chased it. <laughs> no balls and a strike. Another on the way. And a fly ball hit to left field should be handled. Left field to position well. Guichard the catch, one out. Wolfnack retired for the first time. Seven in a row set down by Trace Thomas. And here's Gates Barre. Pitcher, Gates Barre. Barre has walked and scored and will hit that double play shot that the pitcher knocked down. Thomas and turned a double play on it in retrospect to end the second inning. That was big because Jesuit could have scored more at the time and did not. Haven't scored since. No question. Pitches high, ball one. No question. That, that, that play... Uh, you know, to me, is the turning point along with the play that the third baseman made. Those are two great defensive plays. Jay Distler, a left-hander, throwing in the Holy Cross bullpen now. Here's the 1-0. Down and out. Bounce that. Skips away. 
And it's two balls and no strikes on Barre. These two teams continue district play on Saturday. Jesuit will host Carr Saturday at 1 p.m. here at John Ryan. First of a two-game set. That's a strike. And it is two and one. And Holy Cross will open a two-game series against Archbishop Rummel Saturday at noon at Mike Miley Stadium. Two balls and a strike on Barre, the pitch. Just missed the outside edge. Boy, not getting that call. No, and it's 3-1. and one. Pitch. That'll be a good series, uh, Holy Cross and Rome. Three balls and a strike. And another. Ball four, that's off the plate. So Barre takes the walk with one out. Brings the tying run of the plate in the person of Alex Johnson. He's had a big evening. He's two for two. Two singles, two RBI for Alex. As he prepares to do battle with Thomas, the senior goes and talks to Kenny Goodlett. They're going to get a runner. At first base, that's Derek DeLatte who's going to run for Barre. Or is he? So DeLatte ran out there. And then ran back in, and now he's running back out again. I wonder what that, all that was about. Number 15, Derek DeLock, running at first base. That's it's like, yes, I will. No, I won't. Uh, yes, I will. <laughs> okay. Let's do this thing. He is. He's done. Is he's second in. Second baseman, Alex Johnson. Alex Johnson to the plate. Johnson is single twice. Driven in two. Runner first, one out. Thomas stretching. And Thomas pitching way high. It is 1-0. and oh. High School Baseball and Crescent City Sports is brought to you by the Lamarck Motor Company in Kenner. Lamarck Quick Lane services all makes and models, batteries, tires, oil changes, and more. All done quickly while you enjoy some popcorn. Must be a reason. <laughs> the 1-0 pitch, down and out, 2-0. and oh. My car is in Quick Lane right now, picking it up tomorrow morning. At Lamarck. There's a lot of places I go to get some free popcorn. There you go. Always at Lamarck. <laughs> 2 0 count. Runner leads first. Thomas stretches and pitches, and a swing and a line drive base hit to left field. Three for three is Alex Johnson. Runners at first and second, and one man out for Patrick Berrigan. Shaw saw tattooed that ball. Or as we say, he labeled it. Yep, that ball is hit hard. Two on, one out. Visit to the mound. Here comes. <coughs> Coach Barris, they're going to talk it over. They have had bullpen action for the Tigers. Infield. Congregates, base runners, hitter, congregate with coaches. It's well, a confab all around here. If, if, if he's not making a pitch and change, he's... What they, what they need to do defensively. Yeah. So, two on, one out. Visit is complete. Runners will lead a return to their bases and now we'll get Patrick Berrigan who bunted for a hit, drove in a run in the first, and then he hit that ball down the third baseline, which Andrade made a brilliant play on in the third inning. Really saved a potential big inning for the Blue Jays. And, and, and that could be one of the turning points in the game here. Very much so. Yep. That and the double play ball, which Thomas started when he knocked down that line shot at him. Two big defensive plays for the Tigers. Two on, one out. Here it comes. Swinging a foul. He had a good pass at that one. It's 0-1. No balls and a strike. Stretch pitch, high, 
Count even, one and one. As mentioned, Bold Peng busy with Jay Disler. For the Tigers, now a right-hander starts to throw as well. A ball and a strike. Two on, one out. Two-run lead, Holy Cross. Bottom of the fifth time called by Berrigan. Made the outstanding play to end the last half inning. Up against the fence and left. Runners lead again on one and one. Pitches on the way. High strike called. And it's one and two. Got that call. Yep, he got that one. And it's not been a strike all night. One and two the count. Thomas from the stretch to the plate. And a swing and a looping line drive. Base hit left field. Bases are going to end up loaded here with one out. As Berrigan pokes one to left, he's got a two-hit game. And the bases are loaded with one out. And looks like we're going to get a pinch hitter. Or are we? No, it's going to be Michael Brothers. Brothers to the plate. Brothers will come up in a big spot. He's fly to left, ground to the short. Right fielder. Michael Brothers. Driven in three on the year. Big spot in the game. Tenth hit for the Blue Jays in the game. Here's Brothers from the left side. First and third ending to be going to the plate on a ground ball. Second and short or back playing a double play. With the bases loaded one out. Here it comes. Down. Nice block by Broadnax. It's one and out. Oh. They go to the sixth inning at Kirsch Rooney, and it is Brother Martin seven, John Curtis Christian four. As mentioned earlier, Archbishop Rumble beat St. Augustine 10 to 2. Here's the 1 0 pitch, swinging a foul off the end of the bat. One ball and one strike. Brothers back in. Runners lead again from every bag to pitch. High. And it is two and one. Two balls and a strike on Brothers. Put the ball in play. That's what you're saying to yourself right now. 2-1. Swinging a fly ball to right field. Right fielder back to make the catch. Tagging from third. Scoring on the play is the courtesy runner to lat. Another runner for third, and it's a 6-5 game. Brothers drives in his fourth run of the year with a sack fly. As DeLatte scores, Jones on the third. Berrigan holds first. Two outs for Jake Marisi. Good base running at second to go back and tag and get and advance the third. Short stop, Jake Morisi. Here's Morisi. Grounded the short, struck out. Popped him straight up. Should be out of the inning. Right near the mound. Who wants this? Look out. Pitcher Thomas on top of the hill. Made the catch. That's a tough place to make it. But he did. And the inning is over. Blue Jays get a run. They do it on two hits. No errors. And Jesuit strands two. They've left six. We played five. Good ball game. Holy Cross six. And Jesuit five. Got him on the first pitch, Kenny. Yep. Yep, first pitch, and and I, uh, I would tell my players all the time, you know, get in there and call that pitcher off. And uh, but you know, he he, he wanted no part of that. I mean, he he called that from the very beginning, and it was his ball all along. But uh, I really didn't did not like my pitchers handling balls like that. Mm -hmm. Get in and get him out the way. 
So on we head to the sixth. It's six to five. Tigers on chop of the Blue Jays. Ken Trahan, Kenny Fursang with you. Great to have you with us for this first baseball webcast of our season. Several to come. Well, glad to be here with you. What a great ball game this is. Always a pleasure, my friend. Two programs with baseball dynasties and, you know, iconic coaches. Left fielder. Callbacker, Aaron Carboni. Kishar. You know, Miserocco. David Morrow. Coach Morrow. Line drive left center field. That's a base hit. Lead off single here by Aaron Guichard. He's got a one for three evening and another leadoff man is aboard. A lot of pressure put on these pitchers tonight with these leadoff hitters. On both no teams. No question. Gee shot aboard. Lakeshore beat Ponchatoula 8-6 to six this evening. North Shore right beat Destrahan 4-3. to three. Chris Serkovich. At Destrahan too, huh? Yep. Yeah. It's first of two games those two teams are playing. Here is Chris Serkovich who's had a big evening in the nine hole. Two singles, two runs scored, and an RBI. Gee shot at first with nobody out. Barre pitches. Bunt shown. Strike called. 0-1. I was going to say, now you're looking at a bunch situation late in the ball game like this. No balls and a strike. Sirkovich waits. Shows one early. Throw to first. Jesuit, if they were looking for the indicator, they got it. I mean, he's up there to bunt in this situation. Right. To get to the top of the order, even though he's got two hits. Shows bunt very early. It's high, and I'm perfectly fine with that. The idea here is you're giving yourself up. You just want to get that bunt down safe and move that runner. Right. Let's get that runner. I'm trying to bunt position. for a hit. Just trying to make sure you execute the plan here. Get it down. Advance the runner. One and one the count. And the pitch. Runner goes. Swing and a line drive. Base hit on a hit and run. Runner stops at second. What a job. By Serkovich, right through the hole vacated by the shortstop. Marisi, who was covering with a runner going, and it's two on, nobody on. And how about Serkovich? Three for three in the nine hole. And now the Tigers with a great chance here as they flip the order. And here's Brody Forstall, who Brody lined Forstall. a single and scored a run in the fourth. He's also walked twice and scored twice in the game. One now, for one. He's been on every time. Now, do you bunt him? Yes, I think you do. I think you do, too. Absolutely. In a sixth inning of a one-run game yes. with your two, three hitters to follow? Absolutely. Jesuit certainly thinks so. Cheating in first and third. Gilliard second. Zirkovich first. Time called. Now the rule is your third baseman does not charge automatically. Yeah. The pitcher yeah. covers that side on the bunt. Yep. Because if the third baseman leaves early, the runner on second steals third. Correct. Gishard is lead from second. Zirkovich first. Ready now. Long look, longer look. There's the pickoff play on a little wheel look. Second baseman. Jean-Saul cuts in behind him. What I mean by that is the third baseman's crashing. Shortstop toward third. First baseman coming in. And the second baseman trying to sneak in behind the runner. All right. Now let's see if they have the wheel play on on a bunt here or how they decide to play it. Whether they're going to leave the third baseman Denny back or not. Stretch. Long look. Runners who the wheel plays on. He's going to swing, and he took a strike, and it's 0-1. How about that? Wheel play was on, yeah. and the hitter's not bunting. Let's see if they switch off now or if they stay with the hit away. Turf field here at John Ryan Stadium. Ready again. 0-1. The pitch going to swing and took another strike. Well... Not bunting, but he's taken two strikes and quickly behind 0-2. And that's a big run at second base in a one-run game. Really is. I'm surprised he wasn't bunting there. And and every coach has their reasons. I'm not I'm not second guessing. Mm -hmm. The 0-2 down. Throw him a breaking ball and dip down and in. One ball and two strikes.
coaches know their hitters. Coaches know their runners. So uh, I never second guess a coach. Runners away first and second. Nobody out. One, two, four stall. Swings and shoots at foul out of play. Left side. Count holding at one and two. Check again. The pitch. Breaking ball hammered to right up base hit. That's going to score a run. Here comes the runner home. Guichard is there. RBI single four stall. Holy Cross leads by two. On a one two pitch, four stall rips it to right. Almost as important, Serkovic gets the third with nobody out. Yep. Again, just bad location on fastball. You're ahead of the count. Want to try and make him hit your pitch. And that was a real good Truck pitch. Dom Pellegrin. Here's Dom Pellegrin who's sacrificed bunt. He has a walk RBI and he's popped out. 0 for 1. Here comes Kenny Goodland. Pitcher sprints to the bullpen. It's Bryce Pitts who just ran down there, but he hasn't started the throw yet. This is Barre's game at this point. Big two-strike hit by Forstall. And Holy Cross has that two-run lead back, and now another huge run down at third. That would be right. big to make it a three-run lead. Joseph will probably play first and third in and play second and short back, hoping to get a double play. Umpire's coming to break this up. Long visit. Gets there and they disperse. And Pitts is now throwing in the Jesuit pen. Soft tossing. He's not close to being anywhere right. near ready. Killed a lot of time there, though, didn't they? Get him a chance to get down there and get started. Right. Here's Pellegrin. 0 for 1 with an RBI. Runners first and third. Nobody out. It is down for ball one. Tigers now with eight hits. Stretch once more. And the pitch to Pellegrin. Fly ball, center field. Should be deep enough. Hughes catches it, runner tags third. Heads for the plate, will score easily. Sacrifice fly, Pellegrin. Holy Cross has an 8-5 to five lead. As Pellegrin drives in his second run. Just good situational hitting. Yes, he did what he needed to do. Get something up in the air to the outfield so that they could tag. First baseman and did his job. Luca Here's Luca Salta Formaggio. Two for three with a double single and four RBI. Big hit last time. Missing down and out, one and oh. Good quick move over to first base. Nothing wrong with throwing over there. I wonder if Holy Cross is going to try and send him to second. The 1-0. Fly ball toward the gap. Right center. Long run. Right fielder still going. He's not going to get there. Salter from Maggio delivers again. Runner's going to round third. They're going to send him. The throw home will never get him. It's a triple for Luca Salter from Maggio. A five RBI game. It's nine to five Tigers. 
Solid to Formaggio. Drove one deep over the left fielder's head earlier. He drives one deep over the right fielder's head here. Now that is a good hitter, my friend. Good, good piece of hitting there. Clutch hitting there. Luca Salter from Maggio. Three fourths of the way to the cycle with a five RBI game. Nine to five Tigers. And here's Pierce Broadnax with a chance to add another with a runner at third and only one out. Hard hit ball up the middle. Base hit. 10 5 game. Salter from Maggio crosses the plate. Tigers are just crushing it. Broadnax delivers his first hit, his first RBI of the game. Tiger dugout celebrating in the 10-5 lead. We'll get a runner at first base. That's going to be Luke Appy who's going to run at first base. And that'll be Kenny Goodlett to the mound. So, Barre will be done. Pitched well until this inning when Holy Cross really solved him. Yes, um, great, I mean, great job of hitting by a Tiger. You know, clutch hitting. Terrific. Um, you can't really say that that, uh, that, that Barre threw poorly. You just give, you got to give Holy Cross credit where they got three, four, five hits in the inning. Barre able to go four and two thirds. Nine hits. Allowed. Six runs, but still responsible for a runner. On the base pads as we speak. And into the game comes Bryce Pitts. Taking over here for the Blue Jays to become their third pitcher of the game. Hmm. Tell you about his numbers here in just a moment. Bryce Pitts, good one. Senior, 6'4", 180. Four games pitched this year. He's 2-1, 1.88 earned run average. Pitts, 18 and two-thirds innings. Five earned runs allowed. Chen walks, 25 strikeouts. One wild pitch for Bryce. Saw him a lot last year. Very athletic family. Wonderful people. Say hello to Paige. I just did, Paige. <laughs> Wonderful lady who worked with at the University of New Orleans. Always great to see the family. And Bryce taking over in a five-run game now. What an outburst by the Tigers, Kenny. Well, you know, again, I, I said earlier, you know, give them credit. You know, they came out. You know, they weren't given any runs. They came out. They got four or five hits. And... Uh, and change this one-run game to a five-run game. Bryce Pitts. Oh, Pitts hitting. ready to go to work here, and Andrade will bat. The batter is third baseman Will Andrade. Andrade trying to get in on the fun here. He's fan flied out and popped out. Only hitter in the lineup not to reach base safely for Holy Cross thus far. Fouls the first pitch back. Against Pitts. And you know, you know, that's one of the reasons why you, you hate bringing the infield in, but mm -hmm. you have to. And that ball that got, that got by. 0-1. Fouled have, again, same would, direction. Would have been an, an easy out back three or four steps. No balls, two strikes. And that a way to come in and throw two quick strikes right there. Well, Jack Ainsworth throws in the Jesuit bullpen now. 0 oh, 2 the count. Pitts pitching outside. RBI single Brady Forstall. Sacrifice fly Dom Pellegrin. RBI trickle Luca, Luca Salta from Maggio. RBI single Pierce Broadnax. Four run inning and counting. Still only one out. Struck him out swinging. Good pitch that went down in the zone. Got ahead and made a quality pitch that might have been just out of the zone, but good movement and 
well located to get Andrade for out number two. Good pitch to make the hitter chase the pitcher's pitch. Instead of some 0-2 Second counts baseman, that have been way Ryder too good Blanchard. for hitters to hit. There's Ryder Blanchard. Been hit by a pitch, scored a run, struck out, grounded out. Roll towards short, has to come get that. Maurice does. Sets and throws and got his man. Good play. Inning over, but another big inning for the Tigers as they pick up four runs in the frame, and they do it on five hits. With no error strain or runner, they've left five. Bottom of the sixth coming. And Holy Cross now leads Jesuit by the score of 10-5. to five. Six outs to get for Trace Thomas as he heads back to the mound here. Stake to a five-run lead. Now, you know, he's saying to himself, I got to come out here and throw strikes. I wonder if Jesuit is going to take strikes to get runners on base. Um, you know, this young man has done a great job these last four or five innings. Mm -hmm. He has. He, 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 he kept the Holy Cross close, kept Jesuit off the bases, and, and now he's got himself a five-run lead. Does indeed. Uh, the crooked numbers for Holy Cross in this game. Two four spots and a two spot. That's going to get it done. Absolutely. So ready to go in the bottom of the sixth. Scout used to start it. He singled, scored a run. He's popped out. I would not be surprised Senator to see Jesuit taking Scout a strike. Hughes. Trace Thomas back out there working in his fifth inning, and a strike is called at 0-1. He gets ahead of Hughes. He was taking as you suggested. Down and out to even the count. Outside, it's two and one. Way outside. Two one. Line drive, base hit, left center field. Scout Hughes is on with his second hit of the game. Both teams double-digit hits in this yeah. game. This has been a really impressive offensive showing by both sides. And both sides have hit some balls hard. Both sides have had some some balls that had eyes. But right now, Holy Cross has gotten the clutch hits. Big time. Here's Everett Denny. He's got two hits in the game. He's scored a run. He's two for three. Time called. And another... Lead off man on base. How many times have we said that tonight? Almost every inning, it seems like. Four times for Jesuit in the sixth inning. Here's the ball outside. Two penny. Blue Jays need base runners. Trailing by five in the sixth. Tiger bullpen busy again behind Trace Thomas. That's a strike. Count is even at a ball and a strike. On Denny. Next one. Strike called at the knees. Good pitch. It's one and two. That's what he's got to do. He's got to come out, throw strikes, 
make them get four or five hits to get some runs across. One and two the count. Away and it's two and two. I'm, I may be taking a strike here again. Well, you can't. Two and two the count here. Two, I thought it was three and one. I'm sorry. Two balls, two strikes on Denny. With a runner first and one out. Thomas is pitching. Missed down and in. It's full three and two. Kistler throws again in the Holy Cross bullpen. Time call. <laughs> Day off pitch. Ball four, two on, nobody out. Now we'll see what Aaron Maraz elects to do. Used his second, and here he comes. We might have a change here. Trace Thomas has done a really good job. Pitching four plus innings. It may have hit the wall a little bit here. And he will leave. He should get a nice round of applause. From the Holy Cross side, and he does. Good job by Thomas. He has thrown a very good ball game. If he has kept the Jays, I think only gave up one run. He gave up two runs. Two runs. Walked but, two, struck out one. But he, he kept Holy Cross in the ball game when he needed him to. Gave his team a chance to come back, which they've done in impressive fashion. And he departs. Can't close the book on him with the two base runners aboard. His responsibility. This will be the left-hander, Jay Disler, it appears, for Um, low, low to mid 80s, left hander. Uh, he's been around the plate with everything he's thrown. Good breaking pitch right there. Um, you know uh, the the key the key here is is uh, is again, you got a five run lead. You don't want to put any base runners on base, so you don't want to hit anybody. You don't want to walk anybody. You want to make Jesuit come up and get and get you know three or four hits to get some runs across. The new pitcher for Holy Cross, number 14. Blue Jay bullpen busy again with Jack Ainsworth. He's been up a couple of times. And you know, that's what Thomas did. Thomas came into the ball game and he didn't put any base runners on base. He made just to try and get hits to get some runs. The catcher, William Good. William Good. Good Two hitter. to the plate. Good hitter. Yeah, he's looking for that first knock. He's popped out to second twice and flied out to center. So in the air every time. Thus far I'd like to change that here. Straight away defensively. Two on, nobody out. Jay Distler into the fray for the Tigers. Ready the pitch. Missing inside for a ball. 1-0. and oh. High School Baseball in Crescent City Sports is brought to you by the Lamarck Motor Company in Kenner. The Lamarck pre-owned has a huge selection of pre-owned vehicles, all makes and models. We even have a great deal for you, many of them for under 12K. Must be a reason. 
Here's the 1-0 pitch. Right down Main Street. It's 1-1. One one. Hitter steps out. Gets back in. Catcher to the mound. Got to be something with signs here. Don't really know what else they could be talking about. Pelicans beat the Hornets 115-96. to Brandon Ingram, a triple-double, 30 points, 11 boards, 10 assists. Jonas Valanciunas, 20 points, 19 rebounds. Ball and a strike on good. The pitch. Breaking ball bends in there for a strike. One and two. Good pitch. Started off the plate and, and broke on that outside corner. Yeah, man. Well done. One and two now. Right-handed hitter. Good weights. Use second. Denny first. The one-two. Breaking ball line foul. Down toward the Holy Cross bullpen area. Left field side. And the count sticks at one and two. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Tigers have doubled up the Blue Jays 10-5, but Jesuit has two on, nobody out. Runners will lead once more. And the one-two pitch popped up in the right. Another fly ball, easy out. This is Sirkovich. Big out of Tain. Runner tags from second, heads for third with one out. So five more outs to get for the Tigers. It will be Hunter Ufnak, who singled twice, driven home a run, scored a run. He's two for three. It's 3.20 down the left field line here. First baseman, Hunter It's 3.75 to left center, 3.70 to right center, and 3.25 down the right field line. It takes a poke to get one out of here. Big time. Here's Ufnak. Runners on the corners, one out. The pitch to Hunter. Bends in there for a strike. He's showing good command of that slow curveball. Yes, 0 -1 -1. He's, got, he's got a good curveball. A lot of your big league teams have pitchers parks. They do. That, that they will send their, their big leaguers down to their minor league pitchers parks to get some work in. And... Um, here it comes, outside. It's one and one. And um, you know the the ballpark up in Jackson. I don't know who it is anymore. It used to be with the Mets, and it was just a dead park. It was big like this, and it was just heavy, heavy air. And they would send all their pitchers that needed rehab. It used to be their double A park, and anytime their pitchers needed rehab, they wouldn't go to Triple A. They would send him down to the double-A park down in Jackson, Mississippi. And, I mean, the ball just never got out of there. Mm -hmm. Here he comes. Breaking ball hammered down the left field line into the corner. Fair. One run will score. Second runner for third. He's going to be stopped there wisely. And it's a 10-6 ball game. And I say that because you're down five. You don't right. want to... Take a chance of getting that runner thrown out. You're still down four. Right. So it's second and third one, an RBI double for Ufnak. He's three for four. You don't want your RBI double to be a rally killer with a guy thrown out the plate. Hunter Ufnak, our MVP of the Crescent City Sports Summer League a year ago, showing you why. Re-entering number four. So here is Barre. Gates Barre re-entering the game. Was the DH, was the pitcher, re-enters. He's walked twice, scored twice, and 
Grounded into a double play. Couldn't have hit it any harder back in the second inning. All right. <laughs> Stretch pitch. High ball one. It's two big runs out there. A base hit could cut this lead in half. Yep. Here it comes. High, ball two. <laughs> two and oh the count. Ready once again, the left-hander Distler. And he delivers, and that is a strike to make it two balls and one strike. Well, they're all chasing Brother Martin. They're 4-0 now. They beat John Curtis Christian 7-4. Wow. So Brother Martin's 4-0 with two wins over Rummel and John Curtis already. Very impressive. Two balls and a strike. <laughs> Left-hander is ready. Here is the 2-1. Over but high. It's 3-1. and one. Hands a little anxious on the left. Getting excited on the right. 3-1 and one the count. As we peer down at this diamond here in Metairie. Runners lead second and third. The 3-1 pitch. And a swing and a foul back. And it's full to Barre, three and two. Leads this team in RBI with 15. There's one or two big ones out there right now. Holy Cross got some clutch hits. Let's see if Jeff can get some clutch hits here. Disler from the stretch. Payoff pitch, Barre took ball, four bases loaded with one out. And the tying run of the plate in Alex Johnson. He's had the big night offensively. Three for three, three singles, two RBI as Johnson. He goes to talk to Kenny Goodland. Going to get a runner at first base for the Blue Jays. That will be Brandon Thomas. So Thomas running at first for Barre. Running at first base, number 19. Brandon Thomas. Thomas at first. Ufnak second. Denny third. Johnson to the plate. Umpire and Kenny Goodler talking it over about the move being made here. And you got some, some liberal free substitution rules in high school baseball pertaining to pitchers and catchers in particular. Yeah, but, but it gets a little bit more. Right, a little bit more of a confusion when you have a DH who becomes a pitcher and then he departs the, the mound and then he re-enters and now you run for him again. So here's Alex Johnson. But if I'm not mistaken, is Barre out now? Since I believe they, so. Since they yes, playing? should yeah. be. Okay. Right. Precisely my point what I was right. saying is he went out, re-entered. Right. And once he re-entered, he's been taken out now. Right, because he got he got actually right. not pinch ran for right. him, but I mean, he got pinch run for. Correct. Not, not courtesy, courtesy run for. Right. Here's Johnson, and here's the pitch. And that is over but high, ball one. And again, the left hand has been up in the zone. Bullpen busy for the Tigers again. Jake Gehenheimer is throwing for the Tigers. 1 0 the count. Disler the sign. Runners lead every base. The 1-0 pitch. It's right down the middle. It's 1-1. One one. Looked like a changeup. That did. That looked like something off speed. A ball and a strike. Runners away every base. On one and one. Here it comes. Popped him up. Playable infield fly rule. Who wants this? Third baseman. 
somehow caught the baseball. <laughs> Round number two. <laughs> what an acrobatic play. He, he did a Andrade. great job. He did a great job of surrounding that ball just now. Disler with a gigantic <laughs> out there. Gets out a hitter that was three for three in a bases loaded situation. And now it's up to Patrick Berrigan, who's got Brent two hits Gilder. and an RBI. Brent and the only Gilder. time he didn't get any was robbed on a brilliant diving play by Andrade at third to throw him out. Now the infield can play normal depth if they wish, but they're going to be in at first and third anyway. Or now they back up a bit on instructions. Berrigan waits right side, bases loaded, two outs. Stretched by Disler. And the pitch is on the way. And that is a strike. It's 0-1. Still taking the strike. They've done that the whole inning. No balls and a strike. Disler the sign from Broadnax. Stretch. And the pitch. Low. Even up in a ball and a strike. One and one the count. Catcher to the mound. This has been a slow moving game. Yeah, it's been slow but, moving and it's been a lot of hits, a lot of runs. But it's been very exciting. Oh, it's been a you know a clearly entertaining contest absolutely. here. Absolutely. This is as entertaining a game as, as I've seen in a in a long time. Berrigan waits, here it is. That's way high and outside, got away from him. And it's two and one. Catcher saw it out of his hand, so he leaped up and was able to get there rather easily to snare it. Straight up defensively for Berrigan. All the Tigers, two and one the count. Sign given, Disler. Two one. Swing and a miss. Even at two and two, a strike away from getting out of this mess. Good pitch last time. You know, we talked about it earlier. Holy Cross has had some clutch hits. Jesuit needs a clutch one here. Two balls, two strikes. And another. And he took it in the dirt. Gets by. Runner for the plate. Safe. And it's a 10-7 game. Second runner for the plate. He is safe. Catcher gets cut down. Runner for third. Great, aggressive base running by the Blue Jays. And two runs are home, and it's 10-8. Wild pitch results in two runs scoring, and they've cut the lead in half, and another runner for third. Now, what went wrong there was on the pass ball. A wild pitch. That wasn't I'm a pass sorry, ball. On the wild, well, we always disagree. There's no way that's a pass ball nah, I know, I know. in the dirt. But what happened was nobody came to back up the throw from the catcher to the pitcher. So when the throw went, went by the pitcher, there was nobody backing up. So the guy from second was able to score also. Yep. Three two, foul back. Good pitch in on his hands. Keep in mind that was the pinch runner. Oh, very cool. aggressively running, and that's a big move by Kenny Goodlett. Right, right there to put Brandon Thomas in there, and it paid off handsomely. I mean, that was the speed that got him home, and a great right. read, I might add. Another payoff pitch on the way, and he struck him out looking. Big pitch by Disler to avoid further damage. Inning is over. Jesuit pulls closer with three runs. Blue Jays do it on two hits, no errors. 
Strand a runner at third. They have stranded a total of seven. And we go to inning number seven. And it is Holy Cross 10 and Jesuit 8. As big to keep that runner at third for the Tigers there. Keep this a two-run game. Exactly. After six innings of play, Holy Cross 10. So, a 10-8 ball game. Don't see many of those games in this ballpark. No, I mean, just the exciting as all get out baseball here tonight. And the Blue Jays will employ their fourth pitcher of the night as Jack Ainsworth is going to take over here. Bryce Fitz went two thirds of an inning and he got both hitters out that he faced. Ainsworth will be the fourth pitcher of the game for Jesuit. We'll give you his numbers here in a moment. We'll get you the numbers on Trace Thomas. It's now closed the book on him. Four innings plus seven hits, four runs earned, two walks and a strikeout. Given up by Trace Thomas. He is still the pitcher of record on the winning side in this game. Jack Ainsworth is on for Jesuit. Eighth appearance of the year. He is 2-1 and one with a 1.50 earned run average. Ainsworth, 18 and two-thirds innings. He's allowed four earned runs. 16 hits in those 18 and a thirds. But look at the numbers here. One walk in 18 and a thirds, 21 strikeouts. Fantastic numbers for Jack Ainsworth. Tries to keep this a two-run game. He's 6'2", 155, a senior. Left-hander for the Blue Jays. Again, uh, you know, a strike thrower, obviously. Looks like he's going to be, uh, you know, low 80s. But he's going to come out and throw strikes and challenge these hitters. Put the ball in play. On to the seventh we go. Here's Blake Chauvin. Been hit by a pitch, popped a short, fly to left. Took it high, ball one. Got to come out and throw strikes. Ball two. That, that pitch looked pretty good to me, too. I don't know where that one was. Two and another count. Ainsworth watches the hitter step out. And that's way inside. Three and oh. Has to throw a strike here. And Chauvin will be taking. Missed inside. Four-pitch walk. Chauvin aboard. Another leadoff man is on. How often have we said that? All freaking night. <laughs> Here's Aaron Guichard, who singled and scored. One for three. Courtesy runner coming here. That's going to be number seven, Latrell Grant, running for Chauvin. Now, if you hold the cross here, seven, are you bunting? Latrell Grant running at first base. So Grant runs at first with nobody out. The batter is left fielder, Aaron Guichard. Here's Guichard. Guichard is singled in three trips, scored a run. Pitches high and away. Snap throw to first. Safe, but that's five pitches and five balls. Got for Ainsworth. And again, he had one walk one coming walk. into this game. Right. One. Just let's see what pressure does. Throw to first, runner back. Bullpen busy again for Jesuit. Here's the pitch. Got that one in there. Are, are they going to say balk? They're going to call a balk. 
Ainsworth is called for a balk. Runner to second. As a result, Kenny Goodland wants an explanation. Had to be a lack of a pause. That's, exactly That's the only the thing that it could have been. That's what the umpire said at second yeah. base. He didn't pause. No other explanation. Now a big insurance run at second. So it's a no pitch, 1-0 and the count. With a runner at second and nobody out. See if they're bunting or swinging away here. Going to bunt. Takes another ball. It is 2-0. and oh. Six pitches, six balls. Yeah. You don't expect that from this pitcher, based on the numbers, obviously. No. Uh, you know, and again, when it, when it turns out to be Jesuit and Holy Cross, and it's a different kind of pressure. 2-0 and oh the count. Means worth trying to find himself out there. Works from that third base side of the rubber. Long look in the pitch, and he takes that for a strike. Two and one. Now the pitch he threw when he was called for a balk was down the middle. Didn't get the call. Two and one the count. Guichard steps out, takes a look, see if the bunt's back on. There's a base hit in three trips. Both bullpens busy. Ainsworth steps off again. Said we had a three-hour game in Miley earlier today. We might have another one here yes. tonight, the way this has unfolded. Two and one the count. Long look, longer look, longer look, longer look, and a pitch. Way out in front, fouls it. That's one where the hitter might have stepped out. He had to. He was in that pose position for a while. So it's two and two. Sometimes that's freezing runners. Sometimes that's just the way the pitcher works. Right. Two and two the count. Ready once again, Ainsworth. And step off, throw to second. Shortstop, Maurice cutting him behind the runner, but no timing there to threaten that runner. Grant? Yeah, he's, he's got to throw when the, when the shortstop is on, on the move. There, not, exactly. Not when he gets yeah. there. And again, you know, you. you and again, he steps off. You, you teach your pitchers to vary your looks to second base because you don't want to get timed and then they're starting to run when you haven't even thrown the ball to the plate yet. So you got to look, look, say, looks back. Choo-choo. Look. Breaking ball, beat on the ground, a third. Look the runner back to second, throw across the diamond. Well done by Denny. Round number one. That's textbook there. He had a speedy runner at second. He stared down Grant. He knew he still had enough time to make that accurate throw to get his man. One gone. Nice play. Now Chris Serkovich, what a night he's had in the nine hole. Three for three with an RBI and two runs scored. We'll take that as the ninth hole. Well, I mean, and Scott Hughes for Jesuit in the nine hole is two for three with two runs scored. These nine hole hitters have been huge in this game. Hughes, by the way, will bat next inning. What will the score be right now? 10-8 Tigers. Time called. Again, just taking a lot of time out there. Yep. Long look, stretch pitch. Fouled out of play, 0-1. No balls and a strike. Ainsworth taking a lot of time will stretch. Runner leads second from the belt and a inside move with 
Nothing happening outside here. Ainsworth again. Stretch. And the pitch. Breaking ball missed outside. Sirkovich back in. Grant away from second. Ainsworth set. Strike called. One and two. Looks like he's settled down a little bit. He's finding the plate better. A ball and two strikes. And another inside move. Just a bluff. Very preoccupied with the runner at second, Grant, the courtesy runner. Well, that's a big run at second. It <laughs> is. Here it comes. Breaking ball beat on the ground. Pitcher will get it. Looks the runner back to second. Made a good play. Runner for third anyway is save. Everett with a lot of speed just under the tag of the third baseman, Denny. Close play, but he's safe. One three put out. Can we can we go to the replay on Speedy that? Speedy courtesy runner gets to third. <laughs> Watching it right now. And he's safe. Okay. Definitely. <laughs> Good call. Fielder, checked out the replay. So here's Forstall. He's been on all four times in that leadoff spot. Two walks, two singles, three runs scored. That's what you want your leadoff hitter to do. Big runner at third with two outs. Lefty-lefty matchup. Showed bunt and took a strike. Breaking ball. Ainsworth able to get ahead. Breaking ball away, one and one. Second base is very deep. He's back in the outfield grass. Now the one-one pitch. Foul back. He had a good rip. It's one and two. Looking ahead of the Blue Jays seven. It's brothers, Maurice and Hughes, bottom three. Do up. Seven, eight, nine. Mm -hmm. okay. A ball and two strikes on Forstall. The pitch is on the way. He struck him out looking for the beautiful breaking ball. The inning is over. No runs, no hits, and a runner left on base. Holy Cross is stranded six. Last chance coming for Jesuit. Tigers lead it by the score of 10 to 8. And as mentioned, the Blue Jays have brothers Maurice and Hughes do up here in the seventh. You hate to leave a runner on base in that situation and get called out. You have to at least swing and put the ball in play. Yeah. You cannot take a call third strike with a two-run lead and, and, a, and another Go ahead, run or a bigger lead run on third base. You got to put the ball in play, and they didn't do that. Jay Disler back to the mound for the Tigers. Trying to save this one for Thomas. And he, again, will be facing Michael Brothers, Jake Maurice, and Scout Hughes here in the seventh. Tigers up 10-8. 
Remember, they got up off the mat. They were down 3 nothing right away in this game. And fought back. Ready to go. Michael Bourgeois leads it off. Right fielder, Michael Brothers. No, you, you, got, you got a 2 to 1 lead. You don't want to put anybody on base. Make them get four or five hits to get some runs across. Here's Brothers. Here's the pitch. High ball one. And still a smart move on Coach Goodlett's part. It looks like they're taking a strike. You need base runners. And the pitch. Down a ball, 2-0. Oh. Two balls and no strikes. And the pitch right down the middle. It's 2-1. and one. Brothers taking all the way. Two one, ground ball the first, backhand, nice play, Salta Vamajo. He can't get there. Nobody covering. Pitcher did not break. And boy, I know as a pitcher that that uh, depresses you a little bit, right? I'm sitting here watching it, and I, I I saw him not move off the mound. Yep. And I'm I'm saying to myself, that's going to be trouble, and I'll be doggone. If the first baseman goes over, makes a nice play to his right. Really good play by Salter Formaggio. And and nobody coming first base. No, I mean, the second baseman couldn't get there. No, I mean. It has to be the pitcher, and he didn't move. And that's a base hit. Time runs at the plate. Nobody out. Brothers aboard is Jake Marisi. It's going to be a pinch hitter. So Marisi is being pinch hit for Will Soder. So Will Soder will get the call here. To hit for Marisi. Soder. Pinch hitting, Will Soder, experienced player. A lot of playing time this year as well. Hitting 250, no homers, two RBI. Right-handed swinger waits. With a runner first, nobody out. Soder, the senior. That's rhythmic. Here's the pitch. That is a ball. Just missed the outside edge. Catcher tried to frame it. 1-0 the count. Well, next, could not steal that call. No, I... You know, you just go back to him not covering first base. That is a mortal sin. Here's the 1-0 pitch. That's low, and it's 2-0. and Yeah, Salter Formaggio made a heck of a play to the backhand. Great play, and the pitcher doesn't cover first. And you work on that. I, I, I mean, I don't know how often Jeff does it, but I know most teams work on it at least once a week, if not twice or three times a week. That's a strike. It's two and one. Taking all the way. Making Distler work here in the ninth. Are the Blue Jays. 10-8. Tigers on top. Runner away from first once again. And the 2-1 pitch is high. It is three balls and one strike. On Will Soder. Hughes on deck. And you want this one, if you're sort of, to be perfect. Otherwise, you don't swing. No. And three and one, down R by two in the R seventh inning. Yeah. The three-one pitch. He's swinging, and it was a strike, and it's foul back. No problem with that. That pitch was with a strike. It's three and two. So now a big pitch in the game forthcoming. Three balls, two strikes. Runner first, nobody out. Soder waits. Disler delivers. Foul back. Meaningful at bat by Soder here as he battles. Yep, he's going deep into the count with him. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming.
Brothers away from first. Here it comes. Pop foul back out of play again. An eighth pitch in the at bat should thought, be made. I thought that might have been ball four, but you don't you don't want to take a chance. There. No, with two strikes, you don't want to put it in the umpire's hands. Nope. Ready again. Another three-two runner goes, and he pops it up. Runner's got to retreat in a hurry. He will. Second baseman catches it. Huge out obtained by Disler as Soder pops out after quite a battle. Two more outs to get for the Tigers. The battery scout use. Who's singled twice, scored twice, two for three. Credit to Disler. He kept throwing strikes with three balls there and got his man. Yep. Give him credit. The pitch, look out, hit him in the back. So now the tying runs are on with one out. And now you flip the lineup and Everett Denny to the plate. That pitch so, never had a chance. So he doesn't cover first on a ball hit to first. Then he hits. Well, he just made some big pitches to get it out. And yep. Hits the batter here and we'll get a visit right. to the mound, Coach Perez. And again, our. Best wishes, prayers to the Barras family as his wife is set to give birth. And he's here coaching tonight. That, by the way, is scheduled for tomorrow morning, from what I'm told. And that's going to be all for Disler. So Disler able to go, an inning and a third, before he departs. Gave the two hits. One run at this point. Can't close the book on him yet. A walk and a hit batsman and a wild pitch as part of the night and a strikeout as well. And the Tigers go to their fourth pitcher of the game. It's a sellout game for both teams trying to win this game. I mean, they're, they're selling out, right. doing everything to win. The Tigers bring in Jake Gehenhammer, the right-hander, Gehenhammer, coming on. So the right-hander taking his warm-up tosses, Gigenhammer. Jake Gigenhammer is right-hander. Gets over the top nicely, watching him throw. So Gigenhammer in a save situation here. With the tying runs aboard. And facing the top of the order with Everett Denny. Ready to hit. That's like a pitcher wiping off the signal. You know, the move, but not, it's not Finishing up his warm-up tosses. He looks like he has a little more velocity than our other pitchers tonight. Uh, maybe mid-80s. <laughs> Finishes his warm-up tosses. And Everett Denny preparing to stand in. The new pitcher, number four, Jake Gegenheimer. Here's Gegenheimer on the mound. And here's Everett Denny to face him. Denny has two hits. He's two for three. He's also walked. He scored twice. Runner at second. Tying run at first. One out. And Gegenheimer says, come see me. So Broadnax will. Want to make sure they're on the same page. Jesuit bullpen busy. Here we go. Gegenheimer pitches. High and away. It is 1-0. Oh. Got to jump ahead here. One ball, no strikes. The pitch. That's down, and it is 2-0.
Two balls and no strikes. Strike call, big call, two and one. He turned and fake bunted on that. Mm -hmm. Trying to throw the pitcher off a little bit. Taking all the way. Here's the 2-1. Ooh, he just missed the inside edge, and it's 3-1. and one. It's a close pitch. I don't know where that pitch Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's gotten a little tight in recent innings. 3-1 and one the count. Denny waits. Gegenheimer ready. 3-1. Strike called over the outside edge. Got that call. And now it's full again, 3-2. and two. Yep. So the drama builds here. Three and two, the count, two on, one out, steps out. Denny came in a 3 0 2 hitter. He's had two hits. Looks like we're going to have our three hour game. Oh, it certainly looks like <laughs> it's going to be the A's are close to it. Started at 7 0 4 tonight. He walked him, and the bases are loaded with one out for William Good. With the winning run on third. Well, the interesting note here is that Good is a two lane commit. He's really one of their best players and hitters, but he's over four tonight. And he's hit the ball in the air lazily four times. Two pop outs on the infield and two lazy fly balls to the outfield. Well, if, if, he, if he, he hits he, the gap right here. He could be due. Even though for four, that's a guy they Jesuit wants up. The pitch, right down the middle, strike, Gegenheimer gets ahead. Well, the Blue Jays are still taking a strike. Leads, or rather second on the team with 13 runs driven in. Good is back in. Runners are leading from every base. No balls and a strike. From the belt, Gegenheimer. And to the plate, high. It's even at one and one. Blue Jays were down 10-5. They battle back to 10-8. They have the tying run at second, the potential winning run at first. One ball, one strike. Good waiting. Here it comes in the dirt, smothered by Broadnax. And it's 2-1. and one. Gotta make better pitches than that. Two balls and a strike. Game hanging on every pitch now. The pitch. And a ball hit into the air to center field. Center field, they're on the run, on the run. He's there, making the catch for the out. Runner tags from third and scores. Runner tags from second. Goes to third. It's a 10-9 game, but now two outs. Forstall got a good jump on it, and he got there toward the gap. That's a nice play by the center field, though. I thought that was in the gap, and Jesuit wins the ball game by a run. Forstall, good jump, good play, two outs. And now it's up to Hunter Ufnack, who's had a three-hit night, three for four, with a double, two singles, two RBI. He is the man. You know, two outs. The pitch, way high. Really, oh. really got under that breaking ball. It's 1-0. Oh. With two outs, I would have to have my third baseman play deep and guard the line to not let a double happen. He's in a bit. 1-0 oh, the count, the pitch. 2-0, and oh, down and out to Ufnak. Use the tying run at third. Denny is at first. Would they think about starting that runner with a good hitter? Probably not, but you try to draw a throw or create a situation. Yeah, I don't know. 2-0 and oh the count. Not going pitch. Strike call, 2-1. and one. Well, know. the thought process is obvious. You don't want to take the bat out of Ufnak's name, and right. you don't want the game to end on a throw out at second base. But right. will they actually throw through if he goes? Right, that's the question. And if he don't throw through, then you've got the potential the winning. winning run in scoring position. Right. 
Two and one the count. It's the leadoff man that's the runner at first, too. So can run a bit of that. On two and one, there he goes. Pitches down, ball three, and they're not throwing, just as I suggested. So now, right. a base hit could win the game. Three and one the count. On a very good hitter in Ufnak. Three balls, one strike. Gegenheimer has to make his pitch. He's putting him on. Yeah, I, and I certainly understand. Look at Ufnak, who's frustrated. I mean, he's the guy you, he wants to hit, and he can really hit. And that's, that's the trouble with running there. You know, well, yeah, you're right, but you, know, because now, you still could pitch around if you wanted, but yeah, right. most likely you wouldn't if he's at first. I get it. Right. Now, remember this. They lifted Barre earlier. Yep. So he's not the man in this situation. It's going to be, I think, Derek DeLatte. And that's another reason you walk him there. Right. So it's going to be Derek DeLatte. Pinch hitting, number 15, Derek DeLatte. So here's DeLatte, game on the line. DeLatte in from the left side. 375 hitter, three RBI. Runners on every base, two outs the pitch. Outside and high, ball one. Big situation for a freshman. Want to know the count on Derek DeLatte. The freshman at 5'7", 155. Runners lead every base. Gegenheimer ready. Gegenheimer pitching. Strike call, one and one. Quality pitch. Good pitch. This is a, a, a good young player right here, pinch hitting in a tough situation. The 1-1 one, one pitch and a swing and a foul. And now Holy Cross a strike away. It's one and two. Kenny Goodlett had to play jump rope there to avoid that ball. That ball was hit hard. It's just a foul. It's a little late. So Gegenheimer in control of the count, one and two. Runners at every base. Time called again by the hitter. Gegenheimer steps off. Stretch once more, pitches on the way. Popped him up, foul, back and out of play. Dolat stays alive. Umpire says he needs some balls. Holding in a ball and two strikes. Bases loaded, two outs. One run game, bottom of the seventh inning. Instant classic here tonight. Absolutely. Steps off again. Stepping out again. Here come the new balls. This has been a great ball game no matter what happens. Yes. Tremendous battle on both sides. Teams keep fighting back, coming at each other. You expect from these two great rivals. The one-two pitch. And a little looper toward the second baseman. Should end that he's got it. And the Tigers emerge victorious in a thriller 10-9 here tonight, defeating the Jesuit Blue Jays, who get a run here in the seventh, but strand the bases loaded. In the seventh inning, and Holy Cross holds on to win this one. An absolute thriller by the score of 10-9 to here tonight. Wow. A big wow, right? Wow is right. <laughs> I mean, what a ball game. And like I said earlier, it seemed like it was moving slow. But what an exciting ball game between these two teams. Neither one would quit. They kept coming back and forth at each other. And, uh, you know, the, the Tigers were able to hang on. So the totals of the ball game, it's 10 runs, 10 hits, 3 errors, and 6 left. For Holy Cross, it's 9 runs, 13 hits, 1 error, and 10 left for Jesuit as... 
the win goes to Trace Thomas in relief for Holy Cross. You give a hard-earned saying to Jake Gegenheimer, and I do mean hard-earned. And the losing pitcher here tonight for the Blue Jays was Gates Barre. The game took two hours and 58 minutes to play, and Holy Cross wins it in an absolute thriller, 10-9 over Jesuit. Luca Salter Famaggio, three hits, five RBI for the Tigers here tonight. Certainly the hitting star. Great game, Kenny. Oh, I mean, just, uh, you know, there, there, there's three or four guys on either side that just had great ball games and and uh, kept their teams in it. Just exciting as all get out. A typical ball game between two iconic teams here in the area and a great legacy with these two teams and Holy Cross hung on to win a tough one. Just a great job here tonight by the Tigers. Got off the mat from a 3-0 deficit early and came back and then took a 10-5 lead and then held off for dear life. I don't know if there's any other way to describe it. They held off for dear life. Right, right. You know, they, they were hanging by a thread and uh, just a great job all the way around by the Tigers. So a 10-9 victory here tonight for Holy Cross over Jesuit Tigers approved to 11-8-1, and 3-1. In the Catholic League, and clearly established in second place in this league in Jesuit to 13 and 5, 2 and 2 in District 9, 5A. Blue Jays will host Carr Saturday. Holy Cross will take on Rummel Saturday at Mike Miley Stadium. Kenny, it's been a pleasure. Great to have you with us tonight. Well, thank you for getting me over here. And again, a hard earned win by the Tigers, but typical of this rivalry between Holy Cross and Jesuit. We picked the right one. We got here. Want to thank <laughs> Chip Merritt for a job well done. Thanks to Robbie Uchler for a job well done here tonight as well. Really appreciate these gentlemen. And always great to see our friends here. We thank everyone for helping make it possible tonight, starting with David Morrow and him allowing us to be here. Great to see Father Brown here tonight, Peter Kernian. Of course, Kenny Goodlett at Jesuit High School. Our thanks. Great to see Mr. Kirkwood from Holy Cross here tonight as well. A great friend who does a terrific job. And again, we salute and thank uh, our, our friend Aaron Barras at Holy Cross. And Again, he's got something more important to go 10 to now. Right. After he got a big win tonight, he'll get a bigger win tomorrow, God willing. Right. Thank you, Kenny. Been a pleasure. All right, well, thank you. You got it. And thanks for joining us tonight. Stay with Crescent City Sports for the best coverage of Louisiana High School Sports. Check out our website for updates on our next live stream. For Kenny Fursang and our entire Crescent City Sports team, I'm Ken Trahan saying so long from John Ryan Stadium, where once again our final tonight was... Holy Cross 10, Jesuit 9. Thanks for joining us and be a good sport. And God bless you one and all. Rounding third and heading home. So long.